Good morning, gamers. Welcome back to the uh, MCSR Ranked Season 3 Playoffs. Good morning, good morning. Hello, everybody. Um, morning. Early morning for me, early morning for Nerdy, early morning for some of you, some of you are EU, some of you are AAS, AS, Asia, do, do people say AS for that? AU, stuff like that, I don't know. Um, all time zones of the world. We got some good Minecraft coming at you guys today. Uh, if we want to throw it over to the bracket quickly, actually, just so we can introduce kind of what we're doing. Um, we're going to be playing the entire top eight of our bracket today, the entire quarterfinals. It's not in this order. Our first match today is going to be low-key versus Hacking Noises. Our second match is going to be Dougal versus Priffin, followed by Seven Rowl versus Dan Danny Boy, and then finishing up with the Ox City at Beef Salad match. All four of these quarterfinal matches will be happening today. And then tomorrow, at the same time, at the same place, we're going to be finishing up the entire bracket with the two semifinals matches, the third place match, and the grand finals match, which will lead us into determining the season three playoffs winner. Nerdy, how are you feeling about today? Are you excited? What's going through your head? Any matchups you're excited to see? Anybody you're excited to watch? Dude, What's the deal? Dude, of course there's good matches today. There's going to be good. I mean, like we've talked about before, you know, as we progress through, the matches only increase in quality. I will say, I might be most excited about this first match. I, I think that's the, I Talk think that, that. I, 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 I think I think low key the former winner last week personally I was most impressed by hacking noises as far as just raw his ability to just send it you know his ability mm -hmm. to just go in. Um, I felt like I I think I saw a chat from someone that said it looks like he's playing on two times speed, and I agree. <laughs> I agree with that. It looks like I'm watching a two two x speed vod um, when I watch hacking noises, and so I'm excited for this match. We got two very skilled runners, and I mean, but that being said, like I said before, every single match is going to be great. So I'm excited. Yeah, and I think I mean hacking noises showed up so well last week, and again, I mean Loki being the the winner from last season also like could not possibly have been scared more. By last week's performance, I think like almost while Yoshi play, like almost playing better, you know, uh, losing on the last seed to a to a perch race kind of like a waiting for perch while Loki came in and had to zero, but like while Yoshi seemed like the better player almost in the best of three last week, a, a qualifier player versus Loki who won the entire season two, beating the season one winner in silver runs. So I mean, Loki's got to change something up about his gameplay. Um, if he wants to stand up Dak and noises and make this a nice best of five, in my opinion. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I think um, I think last week Loki's performance was was very good, but I think it could have been. It felt a little bit like there wasn't some. There's something not quite at the level of season two for me, mm -hmm. and um, I felt like maybe just a little bit, just moving a little slower than I, I remember recall him playing in the past. Um, and yeah, maybe overall, too safe. yeah, yeah some, something along those lines. I'm not exactly sure. So I'm hoping that Loki irons out those mistakes and plays at the standard that we sort of were expecting from last week. Um, and I mean, again, he didn't play bad. He still, you know, won. He does right? yeah. like, win, yeah. Um, but I, I think, I think there was, I, you know, maybe I'm just holding Loki to too high of a standard here. Maybe I'm just, you know, kind of using the, the, um, the like incredible skill I've watched in the past and just kind of like extrapolating too much, you know, whole, yeah, having too much, uh, like not taking, not appreciating the skill he demonstrated last week enough. Maybe, maybe that's yeah, what it is. Not, that's fair. At the that's same fair. time, could be, could be at the same time I do think, I, 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 I think Loki, I think Loki can, can show up today. And I think Loki I mean, can, you know, yeah. be, a, be a strong contender is what I'm trying to say. I'm not, we've, I, seen, I, I, we've seen the brilliance. I mean, we yes. took down Silver last season. We've seen it. I'm, I'm also hearing reports in chat of a potential finger injury last week, and I, I've heard that throughout calls. So could be a little bit of physical incapacitation causing Loki to almost falter last week. But we will uh, we'll see. I mean, it's match one coming up. And Nerdy, I don't know if you heard, um, but the runners do have a little bit of added pressure today. The prize pool was $2,500, mirroring season one's prize pool. But thanks to a... Very generous anonymous donation from a viewer. We have actually doubled the season three ranked prize pool back to five thousand dollars. So the winner will be wow. taking home three thousand dollars. United States USD, 
second place will take home 1500 and third place will take home 500 mirroring what season two is so we got we got a sponsor but it's a little um a little unorthodox way but um yeah very, very big shout outs to the anonymous twitch chat donator it could be one of you guys you know who you are in chat I appreciate it that would that is that is so generous. This is that makes it more hype, you know. That that that's all that that does. This is, just makes things even more hype. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much to that anonymous donor. Yeah. Um. Very very excited to see, and I mean, it, it puts a little more pressure on the runners. And hopefully, I mean, gets them to show showcase the best Minecraft that we've seen all week. So, very, very nice. Um. And with that, I think we can actually throw to our player cards for a bit as we're getting ready to get into our first match of the day. I mean, we've seen a lot of this info um, last week, but for people who weren't there, I mean, the only thing that's really going to change for us is the win-loss versus opponent nerdy. And what does Loki's card tell you about his chances in the match today? Yeah, I mean, if you read this and you're not impressed, then I don't even know what, what there is to, to say, you know. 66% win rate over just an insane amount of games. Like, that is, that is the impressive thing to me. It's not just that that win rate is high. but It's, it's high at that level of game, uh, you know, games played. Like, that is ridiculous. 1,500 games played is, I mean, that is one of the most, if not the most. And so um, that just shows his experience, I think. Um, and, you know, the ability to um, just grind. And so I think that these, 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 while these are kind of higher stakes matches, I think he should be very well equipped. Um, and then, yeah, the win-loss versus opponent, like you said, I definitely think that's, that's telling. I think it tells that Loki has, made, has the edge here, right? Like, he, we've seen him win a notable margin more than he loses against hacking noises. And, you know, if we extend that and assume that, you know, other factors aren't in play, which of course they are, then I think you can make a strong guess that Loki will win. However, you know, you never know. We There's never, <laughs> there's there's always room for for error in these stats. They're never, they're not perfect. So, I mean, hacking noises is a formidable opponent, as we see here. I mean, look at this. Um, very good stats here as well. Um, not the same quantity of games played, not the same level of experience in ranked, but regardless, still incredible numbers all round. Yeah, I mean, very, very similar. I mean, the, the average time a little slower, best ranked time, obviously minutes slower. That, I mean, does tend to be like who rolls the better ranked Cena and Loki has played, you know, triple hacking noises ranked matches if not more so yep. does kind of make sense that would be lower but again you do need to play with some speed to get a 620 and even to get a 724 like you could roll the best seed in the world and you still have to show up and play that seed well and get a fast time and we we almost saw hacking noises get a seven minute time last week if it yep. wasn't for stronghold that was in the stronghold at like i think 520 or 530 right. or something it was a very very disgusting run um but yeah, I mean, this win-loss, I think it's close enough to even nerdy where, where this could go anyway, right? Yeah. Very close to the 9-9 that it would be for the 18 games being even. And I mean, all these players, very, very evenly matched. It's going to just be who shows up today. Who's going to be playing the best Minecraft? I know Hacking Noises is from Asia. I have no idea what time it is for him in there. Like, Maybe like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., something like that. I have no idea what the scheduling is. And then low-key, I mean... I think he's NA, I'm pretty sure. So, like, I don't know which time zone, though. Like, did he just wake up? Has he been up for four hours? I don't know, right? Like, right. people are saying midnight for, for hacks and chat. Like, I mean, you got to just show up and you got to play your game. And it's just going to be who's warmed up, who's going to show the other player that they, they want to win more. And so I'm very, very excited to watch. And I think we can throw it over to our seed selection process. For those who are no, new, sorry, for those who don't know what this is, uh, the way Ranked works is when you queue up and play a game of Ranked for yourself or with your friends or with anybody, um, the seeds go through a filter, so they're all very, very playable. And that includes five different types of overworlds. We have two ocean-based overworlds, Shipwreck and Buried Treasure, and three sort of land-based overworlds with the Village, Desert Temple, and Rune Portal picks. This only affects how the overworld generates, only affects how you're getting in the nether, how you're getting your iron to enter the nether with a pickaxe. 
and a bucket. And these runners sort of get a little bit of leeway in what seed they're picking. So the higher seed gets to ban second and pick first. And then the loser of each seed gets to pick the next seed that they want to play. And so granted, doesn't change anything about the potential nether that you're going to get. Doesn't change anything about the end, stuff like that. But if you're more confident in a type of overworld than your opponent, might as well go for it. If you think you can, you know, have an edge on certain, you know, off meta picks like a desert temple or a village, or if you think your mechanics are better, go ahead and pick that buried treasure, pick that room portal, stuff like that. So nerdy, what, what do these uh, pick bands tell you about how these runners are thinking going into this first seed? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, I would say that Loki banning Desert Temple does make sense. I think that is kind of the the the, the weirdest of the of the bunch. Um, Hacking Noise is banning Shipwreck. I think also makes sense from the perspective that shipwrecks are a thing that you can just miss. It's possible to just miss it in a, in a way that is different from the other ones. You can always see, obviously miss BT, but you can just sort of not see that it, it i feel like it's very easy to to just miss the the shipwreck to maybe go to the wrong shipwreck something like that um to not necessarily know if you should swim out to it or to craft your tools and then uh boat out to it uh, and and it's those kinds of things that can make shipwreck seeds um combined with the fact that you know sometimes the food is inconsistent as well like these kinds of things add up to make them just a little bit more inconsistent overall for top level runners compared to something like buried treasure which we see loki pick i feel like this seems to me like those two picks are kind of in sync with one another not like picking against the other person but more like we just don't want to play these seeds yeah and i mean i think that's completely fine from both runners right like they they, they don't want as much variance in the overworld as possible buried treasure going to be very very consistent you do have to find the magma ravine which can be weird we've seen people lose some time to that uh, but both these runners are very experienced and ranked. Hopefully, I mean, very treasure entered five to ten seconds different differentiating these runners. Village again. I mean, you have to find the lava pool, and there is a lot of decision making in where you're getting your food in the village, how you're killing the golem, where you're grabbing beds, stuff like that. Uh, but then the room portal may be the most linear overworld out of all five. It's usually spawn next to the room portal, place the obsidian, get your wood, and get in the nether. It's sometimes like it can just be right. that fast. Um, so yeah, I mean, these runners trying to simplify. And again, this is a best of five, so it is first to three. We'll win the match. If we go 3-0, then we'll just see the three seed types that we talked about there, Buried Treasure, Village, and Room Portal. But if we need a game four or five, that means that the banned seeds can potentially be picked. So, you know, if it is a two to one and then we get to a game four, could see a Shipwreck or a Desert Temple played. And a game five, you know, the picks get a little wacky there. You're allowed to repick any seed. Um... That has either been played or been banned. So going to be interesting. And I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of game fours and a potentially a lot of game fives today. A lot of very, very evenly matched um, opponents and matches today. So very exciting. And yeah, trying to think what else. We, we are going to wait just a moment, chat, um, to let everyone catch up we are we are waiting on uh we just want to make sure that the co-stream by the way the co-stream is is live um and we're just waiting on things to get synced up so we're gonna need to to kill a few minutes here i hope you guys understand oh okay and well, nerdy actually completely lied to i lied i guess <laughs> My bad. I didn't. It's okay. It's it's early. It is what it is. Not your fault, learning. I got a ping to stall. I'm sorry, chat. My bad. I am just gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna lie. I guess we were told to stall, and then immediately told to not stall. And nerdy was the one who took the fall. So it is what it is. But here's our BT seed. Our first seed of the day. Let's get hyped. Come on. Let's get hyped. Put that behind let's us, go. nerdy. Let's get hyped. Both these runners trying to find this chunk. Looks like Loki's got it potentially. We'll see this stick out in the stone, maybe. Ooh, not confident. Hacking noises on a completely Ooh, different chunk here. Is I mean, this is, a, this, is a lot of this is a lot of variance potentially, you know? And, and hacking noises, I think, scanning this through an ocean ruin, so Loki losing a little bit of time. And, I mean, it's so early into the seed, but, again, if the runner in the lead just plays perfectly, it's technically over, you know? Like, because you can't interact with your opponent at all in this game in this situation it is just a single player match at the end of the day so technically if hacking noises plays perfectly he already won but obviously that basically never happens like 
unless someone loses like a minute to finding the BT or more, but Loki found it quick enough. Going to be seeing our crafts. Going to be seeing them look for the Magma Ravine soon. Getting in the nether. Very exciting stuff. I will say, I totally agree with you, of course, but I feel like this, to me, it's, it's not that that one mistake was bad, but like, I don't want to make that mistake in general. I really don't want to make that mistake against hacking noises. Oh, 100%. And I mean, also the mental thing too, like seeing your opponent get that iron advancement and then you don't have it. And you're like, oh my God, where's the BT? Did I scan wrong? Sees the ocean route as well, you know, just ha has to lock in and Loki found it, which was good. Both these runners look like they're heading to the same ravine. Maybe Loki caught up a little bit of time yeah, on some crafting. Yeah, I think crafting. so. I think so. But again, if you're new, if you're watching us for the first time, everyone gets the same exact rates, same exact trades, same exact everything on these seeds. So both these runners are going to get the same flint rates, the same ravines here. And this ravine actually fake. Wow. They both are not sure where the it. yeah, not sure where the intended enter was for this seed, but. I think hacking noises here's lava. Yeah, Bo zero D for both of these runners. And he's gonna get that stone age advancement, which I think is gonna be telling for Loki potentially that he's gonna be digging in the ravine. Big gamble from hacks potentially. Yeah, and we, I th we see Lavine Boblar, which I think is <laughs> probably lava pops, right? And he finds it. Yeah, Loki looking for another ravine, but this digging play from hacks pays off. And this is potentially an overall decision that could decide a lot about this seed. Is this a ravine from Loki? Real? It is. Okay, so we're saved a little bit. All right. Not too bad from Loki. It's going to be in 10, 20 seconds. This looks real. And it is. One deep, but it is what it is. There is lava. He's going to be okay with that. But Hax, right. extending his lead in the nether here. Able to pathfind out this Bastion first. Yeah, I mean... Definitely interesting plays here. We do see the difference in decision making there. Paying off for hacking noises, though, it, like you said, it was a bit of a gamble there. And now hacking noises wow. is triple triple stables on hacking noises oh. screen. Very nice. I mean, you just play a double triple here, I think, especially with three. You play a double triple. You have the actual four gold blocks. All your chests are gonna be up there. This is gonna be a fast bastion, and the fortress was at spawn. Not that much decision making. Not good if you're low key fans or low key hacking noises. Really, not that much like mistake potential in this bastion here. We'll see. Ooh, he's carrying the gold here. Not actually opting to not trade in the first triple. Is he going to carry this all the way to the third? Haven't seen this variation of a potential triple stables route before. Triple, triple, might I add. Sort of delaying this gold trade. To bring the pigs more centralized and get pigs from all three ramparts. I like the vision. He could be done with his trades very, very quickly here. Or is Loki here trading? Um, no, same thing. Wow. I'm, I'm out of date with my routes, I guess. Both, both these runners are doing the same thing. Sort of a delayed, specific, triple, triple stables route here. I mean, it's got to be tried and tested. It must be faster if they're both doing it. Yeah. I mean, I see the vision. It sure looks good. Yeah. I mean, the, the vision, it's weird mentally, right? You're, you're delaying the trades off of the first triple, but you're bringing all the pigs to the middle and then potentially getting three um, three triple chests worth, as opposed to, you know, starting in the middle and then going left and right, getting getting the gold, you know? It, it's just how do you segment it? How are you getting your chests? I think, I think I like this. It's, it's probably time neutral, if not maybe a little faster, but it just makes things more linear because you're able to get all the chests at once. You already have all the gold, basically, when you start trading. I, know, I, like I like the vision. It. I think it's smart. Yeah, I think it's smart getting all as many guys into one area as possible. It just keeps things very organized. I think. I mean, now we just see both these runners doing the same thing, and it looks like Hax is already out. I think that's thirty-one inventory in the hot bar. A couple stacks of pearls. Not sure about I the think, string count, but unless I'm mistaken, I think Hax has missed his fire res twice. <laughs> no, he didn't. Okay, no, he didn't miss the second one. Okay, sorry. I, I, I didn't... I, mi I missed all that, but he missed the first people, one. People in chat are saying another. minus two. I, I, a lot of Omegalos... I, I might be inclined to believe you, Nerdy. No, top right, he does have the little, like, thing. So he definitely used... Well, maybe he threw a, three. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Three? <laughs> That's oh what people God. in chat are saying. I mean, you do get a lot of fire res, so I don't really think it's a big deal, unless that was genuinely his last one. I think that was I, his I, last I, one. It, okay, it was, it was his last... I think it actually was his last one. I think that was actually, yeah. a, like, potentially a bad mistake. 
Yeah, I don't think he has another fire as his inventory. So, I mean, a funny mistake, but it could actually matter if these rates are bad. I mean, we did. We have seen runners lose a lot of time, potentially, I mean, runs entirely to not popping fire res. This is interesting, too. Loki with the diamond sword. I, I realized mm. Hax made a shovel, and I thought there were two in the BT, and then he just made the shovel. And so, I mean, Iron Axe is not terrible, especially sitting in a spawner, but Loki's going to make up a little bit of time on these strays, forcing a lot out of this crimson. It's just, it's very awkward, though, because Hax is, is allowed to pre-craft a lot of stuff here while waiting at the spawner. Very awkward to, you know, who's going to be in the lead. How good are Loki's strays? Falling. Oh, this is scary. He's getting camped by Wither Skellies here as well. Nicely handled from Loki. Oh my god, look at this blind from Hax, though. This could this could have just lost in the game. Mountains, Y100. You're not I'm allowed fine. to build your nether portal. The way that the rank, uh, the mod works, if you guys don't know, is when you build your nether portal to blind out, it always, I, I think it, at most, you can be like five Y levels below where you build it to stop, you know, someone getting caved to Y11 and losing. But when you do have this mountain situation, it, you know, it can't fix everything. Um, right. And I think he played this really well, ran through this cave, got one eye, 100%, looked like it was measured correctly. So I think he played this well, didn't have to dig up. I mean, we saw last week two runners in the same cave, both dig up 30 blocks. And then as they came back down, saw a cave entrance literally right behind them. So, I mean, Max learned from last week, learned from watching, played that well. But again, nerdy. I mean, he's got, yeah, he doesn't have another fire res. And he's got three rods. He's already done his measurement, only needs three more, but it's scary. And Loki's got six rods building his portal. I, I mean, I don't think he's going to get caved here. It would need to be a mountain, like, like I said. Um, but Hax has four blazes on his screen. I mean, this is really close. Very, very unclear who's in the lead here. But Hax is going. Yeah, Hax, got all his rods. Hax to go, but he's gonna. Is he? Is he not gonna run out of fire res soon? Yeah, I don't know how much. I don't know how much time he has. I, 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 don't, I, mean, I mean, that pearl on the ground here. It's not blinking yet, but he is bridging here, like he. Like it's gonna run out soon, but it was only one thousand. I think he's very close to the cords, but Loki's gonna be moving there as well. Yeah, and he Loki has the same cords, wow, so Hax's spawner was this. a little bit closer. Hax uh, with a, I mean, pretty solid thirty second lead heading into the stronghold, and and that's gonna be enough if he can close it out. Nice spike there on the right as well, preemptive, trying to you know X-ray the portal room for lack of a better word. Not with that nav, but he might hear it. I like top right. I like going back. I like going top right. I like committing to this direction. I think he's got to trust his spike there. But it's giving Loki a little bit of time to catch up. Not one-shotting that nav. Is he going to trust this spike? Any light source down there? Ooh, bad fall. Not too bad, though. There it, there is. it is. Trust the spike. Gets that portal room. And if this is a zero-ball end, the game, game is over. Yeah. He's got a gold pick as well, pre-crafted for the potential buried spawn. I love to see that. A good forward thinking at the spawner. It doesn't matter at all. But he's got it pre-crafted. It's a thought that counts. Looking like a back dragon. A tall, a little bit. But that's a great pearl. Back 100. And he's not even going to send it. I mean, that's a very hard zero. I don't blame him. But it's going to give Loki potential to send this zero. I thought he threw a very good pearl. I thought that was maybe doable. I mean, that... That's a very, very hard zero. Right. Type type sorry in chat as well. Like <laughs> I mean, that was a that was a dime of a pearl, and it's gonna pressure Loki maybe to go for this. How good is this pearl? 95. He's Ooh. sending it. Yeah, I mean, that's not an amazing pearl. It's a very hard zero. Yeah, it doesn't get it off. Oh, Needed an insane yeah. block extend there. And so we're gonna be waiting for a perch. Both these players hacks with a little bit of a lead here, but very, very hard zero. I don't blame either player for, for not going for it. I mean, I don't blame Hax for not going for it. I don't blame Loki. Obviously, he just wasn't going to hit the zero, so that's fine. And it looks like a perch for Hax. Player entering the end first should win here. Here we are. Got the obby already down. Has a lot of beds. Looking like a 1-0. Again, Dragon Hat does have to die, Nerdy. As we all know. But there it is. Oh my god, an instant perch for Loki as well. He might wow. actually kill the dragon before uh, before the game's over. Closer than uh, than it looked than we thought. And yeah, I do that. Very I mean, look at look what Hax said in chat. Did you hit? I guess that's actually very scary, you know, knowing that it's right. somewhat possible and Hax is sort of just waiting for the perch. He doesn't know that Loki didn't hit the zero, right? So uh, pretty nervous, but both players ended up not hitting it. And I mean, looking at these splits, 
I mean, at the end of the day, maybe it just comes down to that overworld, Nerdy. Three seconds differentiating yeah, I mean, these runners of, in right? the entire nether. Yeah, I mean, could just entirely be that overall decision. 24 seconds of time save for hacking noises, and he, he won that seed by only 15, 20 seconds. It, so that it, it could really just is be like thing. every second matters. <laughs> like, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, and I mean, they, they both played the nether basically the exact same. I mean, up to the fort, and then, you know, Strays took Loki one direction, Spawner sure. took Hacking Noises the other direction, but I mean, if you look past that weird Finding Stronghold split, as Hacking Noises did do that on three rods instead of six, I mean, insane, like, exact same splits. Hacking Noises played the Bastion one second faster and played the Fortress two seconds faster. Or I guess ten seconds, and then, you know, the Nav, there's eight seconds there as well. But, um... Yeah, I mean, just almost entirely matched together and just the overworld. Just determining the seed one. Very, very, very strong start to our seed. Like to see that, Nerdy. Yes. What are your thoughts going into seed two? Well, I'm excited. You know, I will say, this is a very random thing, but okay. I okay. Really, I'll hear you one, I think I'm really hoping... Oh, is up. that in one of these matches, and I think this is likely, I think this is fair to say this is likely, um, I would really like to see a bridge bastion. And here's Why my reasoning. Okay. My reasoning is that these two runners, I don't okay. know if you noticed, but they both use Norwegian. Um, okay. And one of, the one of the benefits to Norwegian is that it has a specific, like, um, very fast craft with a gold pick and a gold helmet, like very, very quickly um, for the search crafting. And so you're excited to see if they're going to have to search craft see on the both of them do it. Yes. <laughs> That's like one of the big advantages of Norwegian that of Norwegian? someone was telling me about. Dude, nobody knows more about these any percent languages than, uh, than I do, man. I mean, we're not I, able to tell you that. Bridge Bastion, okay? We, I feel like it's like, you know... It's just, it would be so cool. Okay, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's all. I thought that was a random fact. I noticed that both of them no, are that, I mean, that's language. Exciting. It's the like same that. Ender Dragon language, uh, an Ender Dragon <laughs> equivalent. I don't know. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but um, I thought that was yeah. cool that they're, they're both using yeah. Norwegian for search crafting. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, maybe we have a bridge. We're, we're seeing at least two more seeds, potentially four. I mean, statistically, that doesn't mean one bridge. Nerdy. You know me, I'm, I'm kind of a stats guy, but... I think we could throw it over to our seed pick band, see what uh, Low-Key has picked for us for seed two, being zero one down. He is able to pick the overworld for seed two, has a choice between room portal and village, and chooses room portal. Again, Nerdy, do you think this matters maybe a little bit more pick-wise than, than, than it would in a best of three, knowing that you potentially have to play five total seeds instead of three? Do you think it matters that much? You think it's uh, still sort of doesn't really matter? I'm not, not sure. No, I mean, I, I, think, I think there's some level to it mattering. I think, okay, here's what I think. If, if, if these were two, like, AIs playing against each other, and it was like, there's no emotion, and it was just, like, pure, like, game theory, then, nah, I don't think it really mattered that much. I think it'd be, like, very, very subtle, right? But, caveat, these are people. And people, like, the, the mental aspect is so important. Getting in your head about things is absolutely a, a, you know, a thing. I feel like, to me, this reminds me of, like, in, in, in soccer, how they, they um, or football, I guess most people around the world call it, right? For penalty shootouts, they, they choose, the, you, you know, you win the coin toss and you get to choose if you want to shoot first or not. Um, for me, it's similar to that, where it's like there is no, like, objective advantage, right? You still want to score all the goals. You still want to, in this case, you still want to go fast. You still want to play the seeds. But, like, the mental of it is different, and that is, to me at least, what uh, is important to talk about, right? So it's not necessarily that these are, like, huge differences, but it's that the mental component can absolutely, I think, give one team the edge. Yeah, I think another thing that could potentially make this just a little bit weirder than the best of threes is if we do get to the seed four pick nerdy the person picking the seed for game four gets to pick between all five seed types because we after three games we've used up the three that haven't been banned you're allowed to pick anything so there might be some strategy and you know trying to win seed two more than you're trying to win seed three i mean ideally you just win both right right be the better player but Try to win seed two, pick the better seed out of the two here if you're low key. Maybe be okay with losing seed three, and then you get that pick on seed four. You can pick any of the five seed types. You have the info from the three seeds that you've already played, what you think can give you the best chance at winning. So 
I think it probably does matter a lot. I mean, like you were saying too, just the whole mental thing as well. Um, so hopefully, I mean, hopefully Loki can win this seed out. And I mean, we've seen fast room portal seeds. I mean, he's got a 620. I don't know if that's on a room portal or not, but I'd have to imagine if you're finishing an entire Minecraft seed in six minutes and 20 seconds, that's 200 total seconds. 1% of your time is just spent. I mean, what is that? That's like four, eight, 12 seconds in portals. That's 6% of the entire run in a portal animation. That's pretty crazy. Getting, uh, getting word from chat that it wasn't a room portal uh, for the 620. That does make sense. I think we'll oh, be ready to... True. Yeah, ready to throw it over to the seed. There we go. Perfect. Ready again to seed two room portal. Again, this could be potentially very, very fast. We've seen room portal seeds with like gold axe, golden carrots, iron nuggets, and you're in the nether in 20 seconds. We've also seen room portal seeds where it's just obsidian of flint and steel, maybe iron nuggets, no gold axe. Maybe you need to make a bucket to right. finish out this room portal. So let's see what the quality is here. Okay. I mean, no food, but like almost as good of an enter as you could be asking for. Cows are right there on the screen for both players. You have the FNS. I mean, this is a nice enter for both of these players here. Potentially a very, very fast seed too. Very mechanics heavy. Going to be interesting to see how much food both players get though. We saw food matter a lot in seeds in week one. How many cows are these players going to kill? Are they going to be accurate with their axe swings? Again, this is standardized, so both players kill the same amount of cows. They will get the same amount of food. Looks like potentially low-key killing one less cow than Agnum Noises. I think that's right. And then entering close Bastion, not insanely close. Is I'll that the see bridge? If Noises has more than seven here. No, I thought that was a bridge for you, Nerdy. It's just the side <laughs> of the fort on the way to the Bastion in SSV Fort. Very, very potential fast seed. Very, very potential scary seed as well. Still Sand Valley, potentially the most dangerous bomb in the nether when combined with a fortress. And it is not a bridge, Nerdy. Treasure. Ooh, Loki taking a fall. Good boat clutch, though. This seed could be very fast. I mean, what was the pace on the room portal seed that Hax was playing? Last week, a 130 treasure start, and look at Loki, 130 treasure start. Hax is going to be in here at 140. Yeah, Hax is just behind here. I mean, I'm not exactly sure. I guess it was just the extra cow, or yeah, he's got nine stake compared to seven. Yeah, that's it. And and I mean, just... again, it could matter, but it also it could, could not. Matter. But it also yeah. could be time loss. And that's kind of the <laughs> yeah. gamble you have to play, right? Like, it's yeah, love to see. Oh, and Hacky Noise is a little bit scuffed there on the Bastion route, but good recovery as well. And he's got done. the food yeah. for it as well. Loki starting this treasure route, though. I mean, neither of these runners are going to have to break the spawner. They know exactly where the fort is. Should be literally one, maybe two pearls away. Just going to be up to how many gold blocks are you getting here? When are you getting these backups? Been seeing a lot of runners recently adopt, you know, grabbing this sort of higher left side backup. I really don't know a better way to refer to this gold block, but we've seen, seen a lot of people, you know, grab this backup. ASAP almost like we'll see Loki right here getting this top left gold block and then instantly mining down and trying to suffocate um or like sort sort of block glitch for like like how do you what's the word for that like item elevator maybe the item gold block up yeah, is I cool. think that, I think yeah. that's good. I mean I've been seeing that from a lot of runners and I think it's just a nice consistency play. It maybe routes it in better than having to do it from the bottom here. You're digging less blocks. I like the vision. Getting the side backups here as well. Loki dealing with a stray pig, but not too bad. How's the obby and chests? Very nice. Looks like we're probably going to be getting 20 from both of these runners. Again, same trades, same chests, same rates, everything like that. So if they both play the Bastion perfectly, Loki will just leave this ahead because he entered first. But a lot of variation potentially. Looks like Hax has all his trades already, though. Yeah, he's leaving first. But Lo I mean, Loki leaving it. The they're doing the exact same thing right now. I mean, exact same time. Insane. I feel like I could Axe like and it'd be, it'd one be no one second ahead on throwing this pearl, but that's it. And yeah, both of these runners are trying to head back to this SSV. Loki Hacks just, just taking slightly. yeah hacks a little worse terrain, and that's just a couple seconds. Going to come down a lot to strays here. Who's going to give the better strays? Who's going to manage their food and their um 
Wither Skelly, stuff like that better. And Loki just going to play the spawner. Axe no not great straights here either. Interesting play. Not sure how many explosives that was from Loki. Only crafts one bed, but surely he's got more than one if he's blaze betting. Nice strays on hack screen as well. But this spawner could crank for low key. We'll see. Hack's running out of strays. Has to peel back the spawner potentially. More places to the left oh, though. He's getting more. Yeah, I don't like. I mean, Loki doesn't have a lot of strays. I'm not sure if he fire did too late. Because there's not even there's not even like wither skellies, you know. Like there's no right. strays. He's just playing this spawner, so I'm not sure if it was um. Must have just been a, a late 5RD, or they're all, you know, in this inside part of the fort, but Hack's just tearing up these strays, but, I mean, all this Ooh. time loss, like, look, ping-ponging this blaze around, is he gonna go kill that? I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's so volatile, right? And if you're Loki, you're able to pre-craft everything, you're able to sit at the spawner. It is just a gamble that you're taking, you know? Loki knows, I'm not 5RDing, maybe I'm getting beaten by strays. Hacks knows, like, oh my god, this blaze is so far away, like, am I, it, like, look how, he's gotta go all the way down here to kill this blaze, and then it's gonna have to go all the way back up to even start killing more blazes in the fort. So it's just a very, very volatile play, it's just, how are you dealing with the cards that you're dealt to play the seed as fast as possible? Look at that. Four more Four blazes, more. oh wow. That could be it. I mean, Loki's Lovely. on five rods though as well, like, they are tied on rods right now. And There's six. Yeah, I mean, this is very close. Blinding at the exact same time almost, but Hax is one rod ahead. They're going to blind in very, very different spots here. Again, should be service for both players. Yep. But potential for different strongholds, technically. Looks like negative, negative strongholds for Loki, and he might actually be throwing two eyes. Not 100% off that boat eye. And I have no clue. Hax's uh, <laughs> calculator is cropped the wrong way. So I'm not sure where they're headed. Potentially the same stronghold. We'll see. Same distance. Likely. And I mean, Hax is very close to, to Loki. I mean, Spawner versus Strays. It probably is the same stronghold. Looks not like... as fast of a seed as we thought, though. These rates were not insane. And yeah, I mean, Hax out. Loki needs one more rod. He's out as well. Is it different? No, I think it's the same. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely the same. They're both going kind both of Both going negative, negative. Yeah, I mean, they're both literally the same. Th wait, like, same exact spot. Maybe within 10 blocks of each other right now. And there's the pearl, and there's same the same terrain. Spot. Yeah, I mean, this is what I mean. They both have to find it. Hack's starting to dig early. Can't go up anymore. Both have to dig as well. Getting the sprint crawl. Big the priority spot. here. Yeah, Loki keeping the sprint crawl as well. You're able to basically be sprinting here while you're crawling. Yes. If you sprint while you start digging... And then you're able to, you know, spam spacebar and get fast crawling. And I mean, digging down here for Loki, same spot. Yeah. Hacks again and entering the stronghold a little faster. I mean, not 30 seconds here, maybe like 15. Because Loki building his portal yeah. right now, but I mean, so close. Wow. Any good spike for hacks? Any good spike for hacks? No good spike for hacks. Shouldn't be a spike for Loki either, then. No good Let's spike. Go. Maybe something on the left there. Could have been weird with the mobs. That looked pretty good there for Loki. Yeah, rescanning oh, here for hacks though, as well. Yeah. I mean, bo yeah, both in this ravine trying to just figure it out. It looks a little ugly. But again, both these runners, they do get the same info. Like, are you going to fall in this ravine? Are you going to turn around and look for a different way? Hacks, potentially another light source here. Doesn't see it. There's such a Ooh. long pathway here on the side. And yeah, Loki in a similar spot. Both trying to do the rescan. No good preemptive for either runner. But look at this. Hack still has three steak. Nerdy Loki's out of food. He is full oh. hearts. He's full hunger. But if we take more damage in this stronghold, potentially zero could get weird. Down the ravine for Loki. Getting deep in this stronghold, no portal room for either player yet. Hax hears oh, it, or Loki hears it. it, sorry. Yeah, wow. Was down in this ravine, potentially where this original spike was, just very far. Two eye as well, doesn't really matter, but I say that hunger reset, it just might not matter. He's in the end first, he hits the zero, it's gonna be over. It's back. Is it 100 again? Is this 103? Is he gonna do a side setup here? He's doing a side setup. 
I mean, you have to go for the zero, but this is risky. More so than a regular zero would be. Yeah, this is this is an overcook. I've no I have no idea what's happening. Three obby. Are we are we gonna be switching up the bed directions? Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning as I'm watching. I've not. Yeah, I've never seen this before. But apparently, this is not risky at all. Okay, oh. I lied. <laughs> oh god. It looks fine. I, I thought he could get a bed off and then just try to charge that anchor, and then the dragon hitbox gets in the way of. Blowing up the anchor, and then it's just you're you're backed up in the corner against that obby. It can't even hit you away. You just hit once. Like he got hit into the tower, and then died. And this is hacks. I mean, he saw the path. It's right there to his right on this four way. He's just got to go down and commit to it. That was it. That was an insane split. An insane commentator curse split. That 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 was pretty. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> within within literally a second. Yeah, was that done. was. Yeah, you 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 jinxed him. It's okay though. It's okay. We'll forgive you. We'll forgive you. That yeah. that is yeah unfortunate. I it's gonna be really hard. To I mean, maybe he just here. maybe he couldn't get that bed down. It really looked like it wasn't gonna break it. But I mean, maybe the dragon was low. The dragon was in the anchor, so I could see that. But when you place that oh. anchor as well, I mean, there's hacks in the portal room. Is he gonna go for the side setup? I mean, he doesn't know that Loki's dead, right? Could think that Loki didn't go for the zero. Yeah, no, one hundred percent has, has no clue that he's just completely wins if he just doesn't die right like right because he probably thinks loki is just waiting on a, a, a perch right now well that's gonna make him want to go for the zero exactly yeah side set up here for hacks as well yeah somewhere. both committing an anchor same thing dude i've never seen this before this is crazy i've never seen this and both runners going for it oh hacks builds it too high though so it breaks the crystal and the dragon insta flies I built it at 95 instead of 93, and I didn't say anything because I just have no idea what I'm watching, but I guess it was too high. And um, he's got five beds, though. I, I do think it's just still over. Can yeah, he's easily so one cycle with these beds. And I mean, Loki has to go all the way back, and he's burned so many explosives. Like, I don't even know if he, um, if he can kill the dragon, right? I think he's got to go for, like, the string in the stronghold or something along those lines. Yeah, I, I honestly have no idea. But it's not looking good. And he's got to remember that just disgusting nav as well. But yeah, I mean, shoutouts though. Getting back quickly. Low food though, I mean, scary. And yeah, are you, are you getting library um, string? What, what is the play, you know? There's some bread, nice. But again, Hacks gets the perch. And it's just over loki's got a lot of work left to do to make it back and he's, he's going yeah. back in what is he what is the oh my doing? god is this enough blocks not with the boat as well surely surely we need a crazy boat clutch oh trying to get the, yeah <laughs> that you can get there yeah you can get there Wow, I did not. I honestly, I was a doubter. I was a doubter. <laughs> I the lower the lower terrain. I mean, you obviously want to go higher because he's just losing this time. You know, building out the dragon is healing. Obviously, I think it would full heal anyways uh, before a perch is, you know, obtained. And it looks like this is a perch for hacks as well. So again, don't think it was gonna matter. Oh, no Ooh, perch hacks, so, maybe. Yeah. I like the movement though. Is that the snap? No, it's a fireball. And look at this. I mean, maybe a little scary. Hacks is on two and a half. Again, I mean, can't blow up like five beds, especially with some armor, but like, I don't think Loki still can do anything here. Like, I don't think he has arrows. I don't think he has a, like spare explosives. Yeah, I'm not sure. Perhaps.
or on the island and go back. But I mean, just he's, all this he's time heading, giving Duke the the chance to get to the fort or to the. This to is the bastion. this is the real ravine that Perfin is is running up on right now. Okay. Okay. But again, I mean, he just did a full circle around this almost, and this is a minute maybe fully now. No, yeah, that it, it was just one fifteen. It was one fifteen that Duke Isle entered, so it's gonna be even more than a minute, I believe. Yeah, it's um, gonna be like minute five. That's just and Perfin's just gotta gotta crank it and, and bring it back. I mean. This Bastion is far. Dougal, I think, handled this terrain well, from what I saw. Yep. But does give room for Perfin to handle it better, potentially. They yep. did enter the same spot, so we'll be basically the exact same nav getting there. This is Stables. Looks like we're going to have a double-triple route. No, that is not even a triple chest. <laughs> Excuse me. Manhunt has one gold block for distraction. Dougal bringing these pigs fully down, though. No, I don't think he punched one. Okay, my fault. Sorry, I was sneeze distracted. There's the left side good gap, though. Break this chest for aggro. Nice, nice. play digging down there. Interesting. I'm not it's sure if it really matters. Chance. Is he going to go for the same route here this time? No. I believe... No, this is the pig fall. This is the oh, pig fall is... start. Oh, no, you're right. This is... I know. This is the pig fall start. Is he going to fall in the same hole that he did last time? No, it dodges yeah. it. I think I think he might need that head hitter there to you know fully clear it, and I just don't think he had that um, last time he went for it, and maybe why he died. Good stuff. Because I think yeah, once you fall in that like kind of one by one area, it's over. But Perfect making it back seemed like very um, similar terrain pace. I think Perfect is just a minute behind, but he might be able to start this route a lot faster. Dougal did like go all the way down and then all the way back up. Perfin able to get this chest plate instantly. They're in this like quicker. Yeah, that's that's some time save for sure, I think. I'm doing a good I'm job trying right to again, do what he yeah. can. To make back the claw back this time. Yeah. I really don't know if Pig falls that much faster, chat. I mean, I have not been like ostracized for using the other stables route so it cannot be like a life-changing thing but i mean there's <laughs> got to be there's got to be a reason why uh why people do it right so i don't know i mean the, the other route will get your pigs trading a little faster i think but this might just get them more centralized and eliminate some late pigs i yeah. think naving weirdly but yeah, it's sort of hard to tell just by like, just by, you know, I haven't watched it too much. And, you know, this has been a lot of my exposure just today. So I, I feel like it's kind of hard to judge today specifically, especially since we saw a death for one of them. Yeah, I was going to um, say, Big Fall is two for three yeah. today in, in successful bashing routes. And yeah, default gap stables is uh, two for two. I mean, so. if it is like notably riskier, uh, that does make it maybe worse for ranked, but at the same time, but a duel he's out though. Hard to say. Yeah, I mean, if it's faster though, you know, if you're good, yeah. if you're good at the game, who cares, right? Yeah. There's the four from Duke. Perfect. I think is ready to leave though. Potentially, I'm not sure if he needs to go back to his trades or not. Getting a pearl hangout. Okay, so it does need to still go back to his trades. Not as much time save in this bastion as I originally thought from Perfin. Yep. As Dougal's just cranking out the rods here to spawn her. Looking at the blaze bed. Looking at the pace. Looking at potentially seeing us go to a seed five nerdy. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to lead. see it. I, I would love to see a game five. Especially because, you know, we had that, that quick 3-0 earlier yeah and uh you know getting very some balance. different yeah 100 percent. apparently chat is saying a baby piglin stole Priffin's pearl trades what oh clutch fire as how how many pearls would the would the baby pick up though like they can pick stuff up yeah I, i've seen a clip um there's a low-key clip where a baby piglin steals a blaze rod and he chases it for like 30 seconds. But I was going to say, I'm pretty sure they can only steal one item, right? Like, so I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Don't think one pearl is a make or break. I mean, considering Dougal has 24, right? But Priffin just has no idea trying to look for where this fort is. Maybe got the wrong, um, 
I don't know what he's doing with this lava here, trying to, okay, start this fast uh, build up, but I mean, messed it up a little bit too much at the start, I think it was maybe faster than not, but clean recovery there, just looking for this fort and cannot find it. I mean, I would just trust the the pie chart, right? Like, it looked like Dougal just pearled in a straight yeah. direction three times and found the fort, and I'm not sure why Perfin's spending so much time looking for the fort, right? Like, look, it's still 17, 18 chunks away, so either wow. he just went the wrong way off the off the pie ray or something. I don't know what it is, but not sure. I mean, just raw time loss on this decision making here like a minute if not yeah. more and then yeah, the, the yeah, food the sure. food as well i mean dougal i think has 12 eyes measuring i mean yeah is, i mean duke is so far ahead here is it even i, I don't i don't know i mean oh, to be fair though we've said this so many times and then commentators first right but yeah duke yeah. is looking really good here very Back very pigs in the overall ahead. here yeah like and he knows too that priffin is not even in the fort from the splits again, this happens again this game. I mean, the runners feel so close in these seeds, yet so far apart sometimes. It's very right. weird. Perfin just still heading towards this fort. I'm not even sure if that's the fort on the screen. I don't know if we're going to a different fort again. I mean, it's just so weird. Like, what did Dougal do here that Perfin didn't? I mean, we're going to get the seed in the analysis segment in just a second, unless Dougal somehow loses this seed. But I just, I perfect finally finds a fort, but I, I swear, Nerdy, this is a different fort. I think it might He's be. in like a bad side at a warp, and Dougal was just in the middle oh. of basalt already at a good side. I, I, I don't know where Perfin is. It could be like a, the, a different side of the same fort, too. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. But in either case, not good stuff for Perfin enjoyers here, as Dugal is very far ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's completely Dugal's game to lose. It's still heading to the stronghold. Definitely some just far stronghold here. But looking ready to build the second portal cords right away. And Perfin just still needs six rods. Like, so much he still needs. Here we go. Can't, can't get it done. Leaving the nether here. Gets the, gets the spike, or gets the I spy, sorry. Looking for the preemptive spike. There it is, instantly. Wow. Instant. Not even checking the rest of the stronghold, but the spike just looked perfect. Don't even blame him. Down the left here, turn into the, bam. Yep. Perfect nav from Dougal. And he's just ready to go. Weird terrain here. Do we get a pearl over this overhang? We do. It's front. Are we going for this? No, no, very tall tower. Gonna rip the half bow and... I mean, Nerdy, unless he dies, it's just over. Afo, I mean, even with ranked, I think you get a three-minute force push. And look at Priffin's situation. He's got seven total, like, life bars for, I don't know what you'd call this. Like, hunger plus health. Like, it's not even ten. He's two hearts, five hunger. Gonna run out of sprint soon. Any hit from these blazes and he's dead. Oh, this could be really bad. <laughs> but again, I mean, on him. yeah. He is two splits behind Dougal. Like, it is completely Dougal's game to lose. Has the half bow done. Has four beds, two anchors. Last match, I would like to say. Yeah. And that might already be the perch. And it is. On sub-11 pace, just has to hit this one cycle. And we're going to be seeing a C5. Wow. There it is. There it Clean is. four bed and... I mean, it's just, what is it? It's the, the overworld ravine for Priffin and just the complete lack of uh, fortress nether terrain nav. I mean, we'll look at the splits. I've been told too by Big Boss that we, uh, we are trying to run on schedule, so we're going to skip the analysis segment, which is fair. So we'll look at the splits, do a little bit of little mini in-game or mid-match analysis. But yeah, I mean, two minutes between the Bastion and the Ford, and it's not like Perfin died either. Just went the um, went the wrong way, and I, I'm not even really sure how. I mean, it, from Dougal's screen, it was just, it was a pyre, and it was two or three straight pearls, and it was and it was there. Yeah. So I, mean, I don't know. Just unable to to find stuff that seed really is what it came down to, right? Unable to find the ravine, unable to find the fort quickly, and. That's what was the entire difference of that seed. Yeah, I mean, 
Now we're going to game five. Griffin gets to pick the seed. I think we can throw it over to the seed pick band. I mean, if they're not ready yet, we could maybe take a look at the bracket real quick for people. I saw a couple of people asking in chat, maybe coming in new, waking up, you know, time zone, stuff like that. This is the second game today out of four that we've played. Hacking noises with a quick 3-0 over low key to move on to the semifinals tomorrow. And we're currently on our seed five of five and our best of five, Perfect versus Dougal. The match coming up, Seven Rowell versus Danny Boy right after this fifth seed to figure out who's going to play the winner of this. So, I mean, they're probably both watching this, right? I mean, you'd imagine that if they're Bro. playing up next, so, you know, maybe studying up, seeing what these runners are good and bad at, what, what they need to practice and, and improve on, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're ready to look at the seed selection. I mean, Priffin's got four seeds to choose from here. Is he going to pick Desert Temple? Wow, he is picking Dougal's ban. I mean, Priffin, I think, won a Desert Temple so much, he um, went for it in the village seed. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, I mean, I like this pick. It's the, um, it's what Dougal banned, right? So I see it. I see the vision. I like the pick. Can Priffin execute? That's what we have to see. I mean, I'm ready for the seed five. Hopefully, one of potentially multiple seed fives today. Just exciting, you know, down to the wire. Winner gets to play tomorrow, has a statistically three in four chance to make money, and keeps their name in contention for the season three playoffs champion, the $3,000 grand prize for winning. I mean, there's a lot on the line here, Nerdy. It's all on a desert temple, Feinberg. It's all on a desert temple, which, if we recall, you know, like Fulham brought up is what Dugile banned. And, you know, Priffin, this is Priffin's chance to, uh, you know, take vengeance on, on Dugile for banning the, the desert temple at the beginning, right? So yeah, we'll have I to mean, see. It's an interesting seed type, right? Like, you get a lot of blocks, but your food is a little low. In a lot of them, right? Uh, the flint you have to think about, the enter you have to think about, you have to find the lava pool if it's not immediately visible. Like, there, there's a lot of variance in the overworlds that we've seen, um, that we can see in a desert temple, and could give Perfin the advantage. Not sure if he, you know, thinks he's more comfortable on low food versus Dugal, just wants to, you know, pick the band. Maybe it's just all a mental thing. Like, it doesn't really right. matter what the overworld is, but it's like, oh, I'm picking what you banned, screw you. Like, it gets Dougal in his head, like, ah, oh, I banned, like, he banned it for a reason, right? Must have. So. We'll see. Absolutely. And I think we're getting ready to get in the seat in just a second. I think one of the runners is getting water or something. No a big deal. Yeah. I'm excited for the seat five. Nerdy. Who's, who's, who's taking the dub, Feinberg? I think Duo's got the momentum. I think he's going to take the three, two. Okay. So like okay. the sort of reverse, the, the mini, mini reverse sweep. That's not really a thing. It's like, whatever. But I, I think he's going to take it. Right, I mean, chat. What he was very ahead. Of, what are you saying? You I'm go. gonna say this. All right, chat. Make your call. You make your predictions now. Type a buh in chat if you think Dugal is gonna win, and a wah in chat if you think Priffin's gonna win. <laughs> that, that's the, I'm 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 not I'm not I am not farming interactions. Okay, <laughs> I'm not doing that. All right. That's not. That's crazy right interaction farming. No lie, dude. Ful Fulham was killing it with the alert interaction farming earlier, but this is this is a, this is another level, nerdy. You're killing Dang. it right now. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. <laughs> dude, it's like it's it's, it's so totally split too. Yeah. What if people put more than one ba or what in their chat? Does it count for multiple votes? Did, did we? No. Did then we that counts as that counts as you you lose no matter what. Oh. Okay. Well, wait, no, wait, anyways, no, sorry. I thought you meant like two, two of the same kind or two different. No, things. like multiple. Yeah, whatever. Well, no, anyways, uh, we got a Mesa. We got a quick lava pool. We got a dark oak for our wood and our blocks. Not instantly available flint that I can tell. Could be at the bottom of the temple. Could look at some caves. Need some water as well. Very linear seed potentially so far. And I'm not sure about the food, nerdy. Could see some mushroom stew plays. Is this a diamond pick seed? It is. Diamond pick. Notch and a gap. Oh Could be food God. for the run there. 16 flush is, you know, the, the, the sustainer. And then right. the, the absolute full rejuice in the gap and the notch. Right, right, right. No flint, though. And no water. See a lake to the right. Potentially flintless woodlight play from both That's runners. They play this one here. Yeah. 
in that dark this reminds me of uh, this reminds me of like 1.14.4 runs you know yes yes 114 those are fun man it, 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 so many different ways to play the game are we gonna see flintless where is Priffin going? Looking in this cave, learning from his mistakes in seed two. Wow. Looking for nice Flint. Stuff. And he finds it. And Dougal, wow. I think, is going to woodlight here. Grabbing a lava bucket. Not entirely sure why. Maybe looking for... Yeah, no, was looking for gravel. Doesn't see it. So Priffin's going to be starting this portal not even that much later than Dougal. But Dougal's got Flint also. Must have grabbed it somewhere. Found Flint under TNT is what chat's saying. So actually, I mean, just both runners finding it. It is what it is. Fair enough. Dougal, I guess, blowing up a different tree, getting Flint where Perfin can't, so... Perfin's heads-up cave play, not going to matter too much. Very similar. But it's a, but it's a good here. play. It is a good play. These runners entering on the fort. Quick bashing as well. So potentially... Not a first. They don't need 20 obby, maybe. Though That's true. I mean, look at this spawner. Is, wow, is Perfin... He's oh. in, this is committal. This is committal. Not like early is committal, but he's yeah, he's got the TNT. Yeah, this is a very committal play, but I mean, this is this is a seed five nerdy. This yeah. is wow. I mean, look at like, could the CD be played any differently? I mean, I, yeah, I mean, th I think this is this is ideal. I, 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 I love seeing Kevin needs totally to rip correct. a TNT in the back here. And nice, it's a little late, but he gets a four spawn regardless. Not able to kill any blazes with the TNT, but I mean, I think Priffin might. Act, uh, this is, might be a good play from Priffin. He's going to be a I little behind. Pace wise, he's, this is better. He's going to be behind on the food. Okay, so here's here's the analysis right now. Here's what I'm thinking. Right, I like the notch play. You have the fire res. There's no time loss. This fort is not strayable really at all. Look at this full crimson full, or full nether waste floor. Maybe a little basalt. No stray potential, right? So we're going to be playing the spawner either way. So here's what I'm thinking, right? The benefits to Fort First here is it's just more linear. You don't have to go back to the Fortress. And you're cranking it with the same exact materials that you would have out of the Bastion either way. The benefits to Bastion First is if you have 10 Obsidian, it's the much better play by far. You're at the home portal. You don't have to Pearl Hang back. Yeah. Another benefit potentially to Fortress First, if you have 20... You're blinding in the ring. Could have a 400 blind, right? Could be very right. close to the stronghold. Dugo might have to head back to the Bastion. Another benefit, though, too, to Bastion first. Priffin's going to have to leave on seven rods if he doesn't want to potentially lose a lot of time to an eye break. Dugo can play the Bastion or play the Fortress on six rods. It's just very, very volatile play. Like, it's going to be so unclear who's ahead. So many variables at play. No idea who's going to be. There are the seven head. rods there for Priffin. Yeah, and this Bastion is so close, but Duel's going to be done with his trades. All the piglins are done. Got 21 pearls. What's the obby count looking like? I couldn't tell. Heading back to the to the fort, though. Yeah. Weird terrain. He's got to make it work. Is this? No, it doesn't need obby. He's not checking this mid chest, so he's going to. He must have 20. People in chat saying 25. Priffin trying to deal with this housing. It's not lava housing inside. It is lava housing outside. So your route is still going to be safe. And Dougal in the fort, ready to go. Does he know where this spawner is? Sees a couple strays here as well. So he's getting a little bit here. I'd be shocked if he can force more though. But if he can, going to help this uh, fortress second plan. I think I saw so many to the right, maybe three or four. So many in the bottom as well. I'm shocked these oh strays are working out so well. This only blaze. It's only blazes. He, he has, there's like there's like eleven blazes on his screen. There's no blazes. Nice there's, there's no scullies. There's no magma cubes. It might be over. I am stunned. I mean, look, but look at this. This is just part of the fort that I didn't know existed. It's full lava sea basalt over here. What a play. A little bit of shakiness here, but he he still has the notch, right? Yeah. No, good point. I, th I think you get uh, three hearts. I think maybe you eat it now. I don't know, but you have so much time. Could eat it like while pearling the cords as well. He's got I'd so be much it room. For zero. Yeah, I mean, and these strays. I mean, Priven's cranking the trades though. Like it's still not over, but these strays are very, what very, if, very good. But what if Priven gets just an insane blind? Yeah, he's going up to the top now. 
Gonna check these chests. He, he might have all his trades. Let's see if we get we'll an eye break here for it's, it's surface, but he's got six. Yes, if he gets an eye break, he needs another rod. This is surface home portal. This is easy. Priffin needs to go back down and get his trades. He only has nine pearls. I th oh, this is such a smart heads up play. First yep. portal up here early with the pearls. He's going to pearl hang out after he gets the measurement. Grab his trades and then leave. Dougal heading as well. Looks like a negative positive stronghold. Priffin, negative positive stronghold as well. Heading to the same stronghold. Priffin gets a break. Dougal gets the same break. Needs another rod as well. Priffin has seven rods. Oh, no Dugat loses one of the rods. He's got no more strays. He's got no spawner. Priffin needs to pearl hang here and get the trades and go. It's 1,100 away. Dugal has two strays, though. This, uh, dude, how close for how different these runners are playing these seed. Wow. No rod for Dugal. Needs it here. Otherwise, he's in trouble. I don't it's even know if that dropped, here. but it's, it's in lava if it did. And Priffin's going to cords. Dugal still needs the rod. I'm not sure if he's pushing cores on the way. It doesn't look like it. Priffin's almost there. Has the soul sand as well. With the soul speed. Strays for Doug. So many strays for Doug. It might be too late though. Look at Priffin. Priffin. In the stronghold. Did he measure correctly? He did. Dugal heading though as well. Is there a spike? Is there a spike? No spike. I, I think these are different. Are these different strongholds too? I think they're I think they're at the same stronghold. We'll see. But no, no spike. No, they, for are, they are the same yet. one. They are the same one. Sorry. Sorry. No spike. But again, Priffin already eaten the notch. Dual saves it for zero potentially. I mean it's very overkill, but look for course. Priffin finds. Has no good healing. If this is pearl clippable, he might not be able to do it. Look at this. Damage as well. He's gonna have to hunger reset. Taking damage on purpose here, I think, from the skeleton. Yeah, good play. Dual in the same spot, has to bridge out here. Priffin's just so ahead. If it's zero ball, it's going to be over, I think. If Priffin hits the zero, it's going to be over. Oh, what is he doing? Priffin, Priffin freaking out in the portal room, though. This is a lot of time loss, potentially. He uh, tries to obby trap himself, potentially. Going to reset up the hunger reset. If Dual gets a spike and gets in, Priffin's messing around a lot here. Yeah, this is just raw time loss. Oh, he's trying to save pearls for zero. He's got three pearls only. That makes sense. Right, right, right. Dugal, it's the nav! So close! I think he has pre-craft as well. Within seconds here. Who's pushing higher? Wait, Dugal has no pearls! Oh. Does he have one only? What happened? I didn't know. Perfin's pushing. That's Perfin hit the zero. That's what this he's is all about. He's got the height. He's got the beds. I think it's over. Oh my god, he's double betting. Oh what my god, he's, go he's, he's showing off. He stunned it on him, and it's over. Griffin takes the best of five. What a seed, man. Wow. And Dugal setting up for ground zero. It's just not going to matter. Saves the, saves the pearls, I think. Uh, yeah. I guess Priffin doesn't have to pearl back to the fort. Dougal has to pearl back to the fort. That might be what it is. Wow. And that's game over. As Dougal's ground zeroing, it's not enough. Wow. Incredible. Season, Incredible stuff. Season one, third place. Eliminated. I mean, there's look, at the, look at these splits. It's just like, it's just so flipped and so silly, but three seconds difference entering the end but Priffin has the pearls and Dougal doesn't and that's the difference but Priffin I mean, too getting that double bet off I, I guess he wasn't even styling I guess he probably thought that Dougal was zeroing also and it was so close he didn't know that he kind of had it you know so that double bet kind of makes sense but wow nerdy what a best of five man I mean just complete back and forth that seed was representative of the, the overall series and i mean really well played to do i have to say just throughout this but i mean at the end of the day Priffin came out on top you know played some amazing minecraft today and got the w yeah and nerdy with that with Dougal being eliminated for season three we are guaranteed now that we will see two completely new runners in our grand finals so we have a completely different i'm not sure about the third place podium I think that might still be up for grabs between, between Danny and Oxy, I'm pretty sure. 
Um, yep. Have been, been on a podium before in season one, but completely new winner, completely new grand finals even. I mean, what a best of five. Like, that's, the, that, that's a, a semifinals, grand finals caliber match. I mean, like, what a back and forth. The fort first, the bash and force first difference, and the fort first just ends up being faster. Insane. Off a of desert temple seed, nonetheless. Like, wow. Uh, we're going to throw it to an intermission for just a few minutes to get things ready for our next best of five coming up. Seven Ral versus Danny Boy. Winner plays Priffin tomorrow in the semifinals. Yep. We will see you guys in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere if you want to see more insane Minecraft action. Hey, I'm Lewis Fulham, and today I'm going to show you how to install the MCSR Ranked Launcher really, really quickly. First thing that you're going to want to do is hop over to multimc.org and download whatever operating system that you have. You'll end up with a zip file like this. You're just going to want to extract this. You'll end up with a folder with multimc.exe inside. Once you download multimc, you'll see something like this. You're going to want to click Add Instance import from zip and then head over to the mcsr ranked website you can use exclamation mark ranked in the chat as well you're going to want to download whichever operating system you have i'm going to choose the normal pack for windows and you just want to copy this link right here go back to your multi mc and paste it into this import from zip location click ok and everything is installed ready for you to launch
gamers, welcome back. We're currently halfway through the round of eight matches today. We've seen two banger matches, a 3-0 between Hacking Noises and Loki, which a lot closer than the um, score spread would suggest. And then the last absolutely banger of a match, 3-2, Priffin just eating out Dougal. Nerdy, are you excited for this upcoming match? What are your thoughts on these runners and how they're going to perform today? Yeah, I mean, we'll get more into detail soon, but these are two very, very skilled runners, of course, as always, as you'd expect from such a high-stakes match. Seven Rowell, I am excited to watch um, as someone who has, you know, been in every single playoffs, been a favorite in every single playoffs, and then, you know, ha struggled to get the momentum, right? And mm -hmm. my wonder, my, my hope here is that, you know, I, I'm curious to see, does last week's win take Raul, give him the momentum that he's needed, you know, to, to really perform in these playoffs? I, I, would, I would love to say yes. Um, obviously, we'll have to see based on today. But yeah, and for Danny, he is a former, you know, I think third place player, if I recall, and, you know, very skilled runner. Um, definitely not going to be an easy opponent. So this is an exciting match for, for, for everyone, and uh, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, uh, Raul is our one seed in the bracket, Danny Boy the eighth seed. I mean, and in the last two playoffs in season one and season two, the one seed has won the entire tournament. So could some, some could say Raul is the favorite. I mean, we'll see how he plays today. We'll see if he can live up to that. Um, but I think, I mean, what better than to hear from the man himself? We have an exclusive player interview with Seven Raul. See what his thoughts are today, thoughts on the tournament. So let's get right into that. See what he has to say. Yo, I'm Seven Raul. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Ukraine and I speedrun Minecraft. Sometimes too much. I feel like I've changed a lot of things since the last playoffs. When my last match ended, I was thinking, well, now I have a lot of time until next playoffs. So if I want to do something and change something about my gameplay, I should do it now because I have a lot of time to get used to it. And looking back at my match, I realized that the issue with both of my round of 16 matches was not me being nervous, but me lacking focus on like really important decision making. And I was trying to pay attention to the smaller details that really don't save that much time and do not matter in general, but they are still important. And the thing about major decision making is that you can literally improve it infinitely. Like as many as there are, so much you can improve. So my mindset was, I should figure out the small things first, make them autopilot completely, improve them as much as I can, and just never worry about them again. And I can focus on more important stuff forever. And having a consistent habits in general just makes it so much easier to play. Like this is mostly about like crafting, inventory management, and the hotbar. Yeah, hotbar is really important. Like having consistent hotbar during each split, it makes it so much easier to play and so much cleaner and consistent. Then I mostly was trying to work on my mindset. I think that's my biggest weakness and always been just trying to change the way I look at the game in general. I knew I need to change it and it's so hard to like battle your own thoughts sometimes. I was like in denial. I, like I knew my approach is wrong but it's so hard to get a positive feedback from yourself because like you're stuck in an infinite tilting loop. Like I play ranked, I get tilted because I'm playing bad and I'm playing bad because I'm getting tilted. And sometimes I would like lose one match and then I would win like six, five, eight matches in a row after it. And I would still feel so bad and so tilted. And I would just end the day being so tilted even though I'm up like 100 elo. With this one, I mean, talking to people and searching inspiration from others really helped. Um, I remember arguing with rocks about my motivation and everything. And I remember we would like, just like argue for hours because I would just keep saying, no, I can't do this. I'm literally bad. I'm worse than other people. And he's like, of course you're not gonna do this because like you're trying to prove a negative. So if you don't believe in yourself, it's just never gonna happen. And confidence is like so important. Like any competitive game, literally half of your success is probably confidence because I watch a lot of esports in like Counter-Strike, the people play so confidently. I feel like you don't improve that much from practice when you spend like 12 hours a day. It's just so you know you will feel confident in the match. When the stakes are high and when you're supposed to get nervous, you will feel confident. And that's the important part. Also the support from my girlfriend Plant Boy helped me a lot with believing in myself and knowing when to stop playing uh, when I'm like tilted and to take things a little slower sometimes and set different priorities. Um, I remember I would sometimes message hacks to Q rank and he's just like, nope, 
Today is a practice day. I'm not playing. And I'm like, okay, that's that's actually dedication. I'm excited for my next match. Danny is a really good runner. His playstyle, I feel like, is very similar to Oxidiate. It's like very simple, nothing too complicated, and he always makes everything work. This bracket is so stacked in general. Like, it must be the most stacked quarterfinals in like any MCSR tournament. I think like three of these matches are literally grand finals worthy. In general, if you look at the leaderboards, the gap between like five best players right now is like the smallest it's ever been. Like whoever wins this tourney is really gonna deserve it. I hope it will be me though. Wow. That was a very, very good player interview. We're, we're always we're always first uh, we're always first taking those man. So it's just funny to to watch W editing. Aster edited this player interview. Bendo edited the last one. Both of them edited last week as well. Shout out to the editors for putting those together for us uh, with the with the time crunch. I, I was also told Bendo thought his interview was supposed to be done tomorrow. So Bendo sent the interview for the last match like ten minutes before <laughs> the match started. So shout out to them for working overtime. Um, Apparently, Aster thought the same as well. So maybe, maybe it was our fault. Um, but it is what it is. Maybe, maybe it was our bad. But again, W interviews. I mean, it's that was nice too. I mean, Raul gave us a lot of insight on mentality stuff, right? Like because you said he played in both of the earlier playoffs and lost in the round of sixteen in both of them. So being able to like realize, you know, why you're losing and get that, you know, reflection because it's different than like losing a ranked match on the ladder and queuing up again, it's like you're losing the tourney. It's like a different mindset. So like, what are you doing wrong there, right? Especially, right. I think he's been the, the higher seated player both times. So like, why are you losing against like a, like a quals player right when he should be favored, right? So it, being able to, you know, think about that. I mean, Rao made it past the round of 16 in this playoffs. We're in the round of eight. We're, we're in best of five territory. So, Absolutely. I mean, he's changed something up at least, right? You know, broken that, that streak. Um, Wow, nine matches between Raul and Danny, and Raul actually a losing record. 60% overall win rate, but four, four and five against Danny. I mean, anything else really stand out to you today? I know we looked at these last week, but yeah. I mean... I mean, to me, the important thing to note is that Raul is a very good player who has seemingly been in his head about tournaments. The question for me is not, is Raul good enough to be here? Is Raul skilled enough? It is, can he sort of get past the mental barriers? My answer to that question, based on last week's performance by Raul, I'm going to say yes. I think last week's performance is a huge win for Raul, not necessarily because of the sort of person that he knocked out or like moving forward, but like the actual mental, you know, sort of validation that yes, he moved on. He can win a in, in, in one of these ranked settings or sorry, one of these tournament settings um, and not just the ranked settings. And therefore, for me, I think Raul is, you know, sky's the limit for Raul, in my opinion, based, just based off last week. And I know this might sound silly, you know, it's just one match, but like, I think that was huge in my opinion, for Raul's uh, tournament success. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it is such a mental game in tournaments, especially like Raul said, there's a lot of these quarterfinal matches. Like, I, I, we just watched like a grand finals caliber series, yeah. bro. Like, that was just insane. And I mean, I, like Raul said, so many people in this quarterfinals like could see them winning the tournament and the skill level is so close. So it's like, who shows up? Who's got the better mental? Who's going to play better day of? And, and I think Raul has the momentum from last week, has the mental. And I think, like you said, sky's the limit. But let's look at uh, let's look at Danny Boy's card. I mean, he's got the better win loss against opponent, not by yeah, much, I but mean, it's up there. I mean, you can't count Dan Danny out at the same time. You know, at the, we were talking about how Raul is you know a, a formidable opponent, of course, but that does not make Danny an easy win by any means. Danny has some incredible stats here, as we can see. Not necessarily the highest win percentage, but does have a positive win rate over Raul, at least over those games. So while that doesn't show that he's guaranteed to win, it does indicate that it's very possible for this to go either way. I think Danny, you know, he's a funny guy. He, he has a good mental, I would say. Um, maybe not as, you know, practiced in, in some ways as other runners, but I definitely think that he sort of has, you know, you know, like sort of a, a good attitude towards things. And, um, I think he absolutely could, could not only win this match, but could win the whole tournament. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, you were going to say what I was going to say. So I got nothing else. I think we should throw it over to the seed pick bands, see what these runners are working with. Look at this. Wow. BT band and village as well. This is going to be a weird freaking 
Three seats that I like filler word. I'm saying freaking that's funny. Um, BT and Village Band, interesting picks from both. I mean, just just kind of weird, right? BT Band, I think maybe first time we've seen that today. And then yeah. Village. I mean, you'd think Desert Temple Band mm. instead of Village, yeah. but I mean, maybe you're more comfortable with the low food. It's just, it's all about what these, um, what these runners want to play, right? What they're most comfortable with. They, they, they're the ones who've been playing hundred, hundreds of ranked matches. They know what they're best at over worlds. They know like seeing just pace against other runners. Like, oh, I'm, I'm always entering first on Desert Temple Seeds or, or I'm always winning on Room Portal Seeds. So, hey, it's up to them at the end of the day. And, and when these runners are so closely matched, everybody here left in the bracket, and it's such a mental game, maybe this matters more than we think. I'm gonna I'm gonna make an early prediction, okay? This is my early prediction, okay? It might be wrong. I mean, it's obviously more likely than not, but I think whoever wins the first match is gonna win the game, the, the series. That's what I think. I think the All first right. match is gonna be telling. Um, obviously, that's like you know more likely than not, but I do think that is more likely than the statistical more likely than not, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll yeah. I'll hold you to it. Uh, I think these runners are ready to get into it. You could be right. That's what I think is going to happen with this game. I think it's going to be very telling. We can, uh, we can see what, sort of where the runners are at. Here's our shipwreck seed. Today. I have to find it on the coast of this island, though. It could get weird. Ralph has a spike, which, I mean, could be a mob spawner. could be a shipwreck close. Should know that it's a shipwreck seed, and there it is. A little buried yeah. in this island. Here's the food chest... And Danny, accessible okay. here. Danny's front loading wood, yeah. which is not the wrong play. Not sure if he saw this ship or not. But Ral's gonna have that, to go back down there and get that food. Um, food chest should have food. Uh, I think the filter just genuinely was a filter bug in the last seed that there was no food in the food chest. Shipwreck chest hmm. should always have food. So Ral's gonna probably go down and check this. Maybe make some shears as well for some blocks. But Danny, um, Danny hasn't seen the shipwreck yet, so he's going to... I mean, he sees one far there. Maybe he's going to the far one. Maybe we're going to see completely different shipwreck plays. Or he spots it. He spots it on the side of this village there. Does he? It's on a screen. Come on, Danny. There you go. Let's <laughs> say so you see it. He's not... Hey! Hey! He's going the wrong way. Does he think it's the wrong ship? What? Interesting. <laughs> okay, well... I... This could be very good for Rowl enjoyers in chat, as this shipwreck looks very bad I mean, this, to me. This is a full ship, but it's is not it guaranteed ship? to have enough iron. Yeah, it's not guaranteed. It's not the filter shipwreck. And he, I mean, there's no way he didn't see that shipwreck there. And oh there God, it is. He knows it's wrong. That's 4 and 80. He doesn't have enough. I mean, you can enter a bucket list. You can enter with a gold pick, but it's not enough. It's got potentially better food as well, but. I don't know if that was. I guess I didn't have. I don't know if Rowl's had carrots. Less I mean, Ral's gonna, sure. Ral's gonna find a ravine as well. Danny is gonna head back to the shipwreck, maybe. I mean, surely he saw it on the left there. Is this the real ravine, though? It is. Oh, looks are we like gonna see gonna a gonna... bucket list or a a bucket list? Okay. Wow. Okay. So hopefully, it's deep enough. If it's not deep enough, I just I don't know what the backup is. Might it's actually work out fine for something? Danny. Yeah. We're all just doing a classic portal with the bucket. We will see Danny crank out this bucket list. He's got the blocks. This ravine looks deep enough for sure, but how long has it been since he's done bucket list? Needs the target to block five, six, bam, door. Nice. Gets that water in. Cranking it out, but it is just slower, and Ral is entering this bridge. Nice water drain from Danny. Well done. But it is slower. Might be the first bucket list we've ever seen. As I mean, you just you always get enough iron for a bucket. I think this is the I think it's the first time we've ever seen a uh, a bucket list. So shout out to Danny for hitting it. I don't, I haven't done a bucket list in months. I mean, I you don't really enter magma ravines in AA, but I mean, I don't know the last time Danny's done a bucket list. Like I say, it's just something you never do in ranked. Right. But we got this bridge play. Not sure what's really happening to Rao. Danny taking this terrain better. You can use chunk borders to dig on the chalice, I think. It is 9-9. Nine, nine. I guess 8-8 eight, eight technically will put you in the middle. That should hit the chalice for Danny, and there it is. So almost even pace, even though he's been uh, even though he's behind. Entering right. the nether because of the bucket list. I mean again, he doesn't have a bucket, so I guess he can't kill a hoglin 
on the bridge. But I guess um, he has golden carrots, potentially, from the food chest. He's got five carrots. Good play. Ral doesn't have carrots. He's got more bread. Has a stew here. Was this a saturation stew? He's getting a lot. Oh, my God. He's getting a lot of healing from that. That was a saturation stew. Wow. But Danny is going to trade the gold first here. Very, very close. Not what I was expecting from watching the overworld at all. Mm -hmm. I think Rao lost the gold block on the side there. Yeah, definitely a bit suboptimal there, but it's the end of the world. As he does get a crossbow, which is nice. Yeah, 10 on me in that chest. So should probably get 20, especially because of bridge gold amounts. And then it's just about finding that fortress. Who's going to leave first? Who's going to leave off of better terrain? You know, this is a little buried, right? Are you going to dig up? Are you going to go back to where you dug in originally? What's the play? And when you're just sitting here with trades, there's really not that much to overlap. It's about cleaning your inventory, getting ready maybe for a blaze bed, getting ready for a pearl hang if it's possible. There's still a lot of stuff you can do with this bridge, even when you're just waiting for trades. And Danny finds a great pearl hang spot out here. And Ral, I think, is digging up to activate his Pearl Hang, potentially leaving. No. So Danny, finding a better Pearl Hang spot, able to overlap this a little better, checking the single chest. Doesn't really need it, though. Gets some arrows and crying, but that's not going to help him out compared to what Ral is going to grab here. 17 Obby, 18, 19. And Danny did craft some Golden Carrots, so he does have less gold. I mean, there, there are a lot of backups, so it really shouldn't be a big deal. But Ral's got 20. Danny's got 17. So he's got to wait here a little bit longer. Danny may be missing a pearl trade. No, there it is. And Ral's able to pearl out first and is in the fort first. Was in the bastion first. Does make sense. Maybe a little bit more pigs as well. But Danny's going to be following very shortly. Just needs that 20th obsidian. There it is. Four beds, two anchors. Potentially more for Ral. And there's a double spawner in an SSV. Can't ask for better than that. Yeah, I mean, it's looking... Very solid. I wonder if we're going to see... Wow, any instant apps to it. That's a lot of time save. I like that Ral still goes for the 5RD, and I'd be curious if he's going to get any good strays. Yeah, I don't think that... I mean, you're playing the double spawner. I don't think you do. Especially, I think both these runners have low explosive. Yeah. I know Danny has four bed, two anchor. I'm not sure about Ral, but... Don't think... Um, well, there we go, though. have enough related to blaze bed. Some strays. Yeah. He's able to snipe one, head back to where the spawner is located. Maybe here's another one in here, I think. Nice. It's just always a little risky, right? Like, is it worth the time loss I'm trying to force this stray totally. as opposed to two spawner cycles working for you at the same time? Very, very unclear always. Good for Rao, though. Kills a blaze over lava, and it doesn't drop, so he's not, um, not losing a rod there. And Danny just cranked this double spawner. He doesn't even have his RD down, trying not to worry yeah. about strays at all. Really hasn't even mined out either of these spawners. Just hoping that they, they're going to spawn enough, has enough stuff to do overlapping. That's what it is. Six rods for Ral here as he gets ready to leave. Not sure how much Danny's, Danny's at. Five or six, I think. Four. No. He's got, no, he's got Four six plus, with, yeah, with yeah. the eyes as well, yeah. So very, very similar pace. Danny's slightly ahead. There's the boat eye. That some good accuracy. Not going to throw another one. Going to throw an upwards pearl. Grab the eye. And the pearl's going to land again. Nice. He, we, we saw, I believe, Loki try that last. Ral uh, doing the last same week. exact thing as well. Grabbing the eye. Both did it. Nice. Oh. Pearl lands. Oh, weird. But he clutches. I think that's like a 98 or 99% chance to work. The pearl can RNG very, very badly and miss. But if you stand in the dead middle it will almost always work, and it's very fast, nice. as opposed to having to bucket back up or block back up. If you have the food for it, obviously, of course. That was a good play. I Both really runners, like that strategy. I mean, same coordinates, same stronghold. How do you lower your cords here? Ralph throwing an under pearl, maybe better terrain. Both going at, at these cords from different directions. Strider in the Danny, way for Ral. Yeah, Danny gets the obby down literally seconds before Ral. These runners wow. are separated by less than five seconds. In the portal animations at the exact same crazy. time. Crazy. 
Rao getting a slightly better eye spy than Danny. But Danny's got a better view on the Fyro's Law portal room. And that could be it. Oh my god. Rao's gonna see it now, I think, but it might be too late. No, Rao doesn't. It's the same stronghold too, so Rao's in the wrong position. Danny's got pre-crafted four beds, two anchors. Front, 97 maybe. High pearl. But he's got it. Got time on the setup as well. Oh, no. Misplaced anchor. He still has time. Still has time. Good timing on the first bed. Only six explosives. These have to be good. That second oh, one, not amazing. It's clutchable, especially with a crystal. Very doable. These anchors will do a lot of damage. Ooh, Needs good damage close. on the six anchor. Needs oh, the crystal. Oh, and it pre-breaks because of the anchor. He's got to chase it down with the bow. But Ralph's not zeroing. I don't, I it's don't so think close. he's off. Danny it's has no explosives. so close. Danny, no, Danny, Danny does. Falls off the tower. Oh my oh god. Oh my A god. Disaster. And no pearl, no boat, no water bucket because of bucket list nerdy. Are you kidding? The bucket list play? Like, what is that? That's crazy. That, you're right. That's crazy. That's insane. Absolute disaster for yeah, Danny Boy. Like, but for just, Raul, this is looking... Yeah, that that is... Unlosable. Yeah. <laughs> the bucketless wow. snowball butterfly effect, man. I mean, he had the pearl. It was in the, in the inventory because it wasn't stackable. Could have potentially had a boat as well. So close to chasing down that, that dragon with the last bit of damage, but Raul... In a position to hit this one cycle, to take the 1-0 lead. I mean, wow, wow, what a close seat. I mean, I'm ready to look at these splits, man. I think they I spy within three seconds of each other. Just incredible yeah, stuff. Very, very well played. Danny, so, so close. To He's got to get into the bucket list portal. That's funny. It's too little, too late. What a seed one. I mean, if I'm so Danny, I'm not even super disappointed. Like, you, you played that well. It's just it's one small thing. Three seconds yeah. difference on the stronghold. Like, frame differences there in your timings, and you win, you know? Yeah, just like a couple ticks earlier or later on a couple of those beds or the anchors just to get a little bit more damage off. What a seed, man. Hey, Incredible. we're going to get a CC too. Danny's going to get to pick between, I mean, what do they ban? They ban BT, they ban Village. So we're going to get to see either a Desert Temple or a Room Portal. Definitely more linear seed types than these random shipwreck overworlds. I mean, we saw Danny had an experience in this shipwreck overworld. So maybe trying to shake off the mental from that. But I mean, he did a really good job clawing back. A bucketless enter 30 seconds slower, and he claws almost all that time back in the nether. Very, very well played. And let's see. Temple, surely. Yes, there it is. Desert, Temple, Seed. Again, you got to win both. You're going to play both anyways. Yep. Got to win three still. It doesn't really matter. But again, it's a mental game, right? And whoever's got the better mental when these runners are just so evenly matched. I mean, you're entering the stronghold at the exact same time. Like, could you get any closer? Like, three seconds. It's just crazy. Just so, yeah. It just like so close. I mean, I, I it, it 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 sounds you know. I mean, obviously every second does matter, but like it's the seeds like that that remind you that like sometimes you know hesitating for a second on something that adds up. You know, like just these tiny little things that add up. Um, it's crazy. It's fantastic job to both runners in my opinion on that last seed that was really fun to watch yeah i'm excited just to see more seeds like this, this is going to be another amazing best of five continue the day and i mean the runners are already getting to see two i'm ready to watch it nerdy let's get some all advancements let's do it uh, okay well I mean, they, no, okay no, well, no, not yeah. just, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> wrong that's not that's not what we're doing that's not i'm sorry doing, i'm sorry right? i'm sorry that that's right. actually i leaked the season four script we're actually we're yeah, doing it's... all advancements uh ranked where the grand finals everything's gonna be normal and then grand finals is gonna be only desert temples and the room is gonna be set to the aa completion oh my god they can't find it over the hill and it, it's only gonna Run be you playing and, and and yeah hidden desert temple scared 
Where is it? There it is. Saw a lava pool as well on Ralph's screen. Not sure if Danny picked that up. Pretty open in the deserts here. Yeah. Nice fall damage management from Danny Boy. Going to see that from Ralph with the sand as well. See what these runners are yeah. working with here in terms of iron, in terms of diamonds, in terms of food. A lot of big questions that are answered in this temple right now. See an inventory. Eight iron. 20 flesh. Maybe a gap, but I'm not sure. No notch this time. So we're going to look for some food, potentially lava bucket plays. Looking for our gravel again, looking for our flint, looking for our water. A lot of questions to be answered always on our temple seeds. A lot of different runner expression. Will Danny find flint in this cave? We're all at completely different trees. Not close to this lava pool at all. So stressful to play these two as well, man. Just knowing, like, is your opponent going to find the flint? Are they going to find the food? Like, what are they entering with? You have no clue on their enter pace at all. No advancements that will tell you anything until they get to the lava pool. There's Ral just full killing that cow. He's got raw beef. Wonder if he will cook that up later. And Danny finds gravel in a cave. Big play. That works. That's good stuff from Danny. It's where you got to find it, right? No river in sight. Ral, oh, look at this. Completely different play. A dried up river, though. Got to go so far for gravel here. And I mean, this is what, like 15 seconds of running there and back? Uh, yeah, that could just like be that. the seed, right? Like, who knows? Yeah, I mean, last time, if it was like anything like last seed, then yeah, totally. Yeah, but he's got to do it. Going to grind this gravel on the way to the lava pool that he saw. And he gets the flint. Danny, though, getting food as well. Like, look at this. Just so many decisions. Rao, more food as well. Both runners. Who's going to stop getting food first? Who's going to enter first? It's going to be Danny, but not by much. Rao also heading back to the lava pool at the same time. So remember where he found it, though, and get some water as well. So Danny's taking decent-sized lead off of this overworld. Again, food situation a little weird. I know Rao's got steak, which is better than mutton. But I'm not sure how much food either player has. So far, Bastion as well. Going to be a lot of terrain knife here. Very, very, very dynamic seed so far. Love to see it. Look at this terrain, bro. Where are you going? I'll get a better yeah, spawn. Look, he's, like, he's kind of like above, maybe. But it's also kind of the wrong way. Maybe he can try to force something here. This is nice. Getting, getting you a little out of your element. Oh, Danny's at Y100. That's why he's digging down so far. Ought to expose some terrain at some point. Maybe start boat crawling here. Not a good look for Danny Enjoyers, though. As Ral just found the terrain, Danny's got to find this at some point. This sea counter just has to open up for him. Trying to look around, see where he is. As Ral's just able to run, run it down. Danny's got nothing. I think his sea counter closes again. Looking for a gold pick craft, potentially. Not good for Danny enjoyers. Just slightly different lava pools, give slightly different enters, and Danny just a little bit worse terrain, has to fight through still. Yep. And it is by no means over, but it is not a good start. No sea cutter here as well. Has to try to find the Bastion still. Yeah, this is just Looking disaster. for the E-Ray. Yeah, I'm just I'm not sure why um why this terrain is not opening up. Looks very looks very open on Raw's screen. I'm not sure. Just unlucky. Gonna start the boat crawl again here from Danny though. Maybe we're out of the basalt here. No. I know there's an SSV, you just gotta find it. 700 on the sea. This is looking like it's where it's gonna open, but. Danny's got to claw this time back somehow. There's a soul sand. Gets out. Wow, just so unlucky on the terrain. Sees the fort on the way. But there's so much time he has to make up now. We will see. Manhunt from Danny as well. 
Maybe about a minute separating these runners right now. And yeah, I mean, it just came down to that terrain, really. Poor Danny. Yeah, it's a bad spawn. Maybe he didn't handle the sea counter as well as he could, but uh, sometimes, like, says two, three hundred, four hundred, you dig that way, it goes nowhere, it is what it is. Yeah. Hard to say exactly where the fault lies, but in either case, it is not over. As we've seen multiple times today, much worse differences in pace with a comeback. Yeah, I mean, we saw Danny go for zero on the last seed and Raul did not, right? True. Didn't end up mattering, right? That Danny did uh, mess up the damage on the zero. But, I mean, could be a similar situation on this seed. Raul could also just die, lose time, heading to the fort, lose time in the fort. So much seed still left to play, but not looking good initially for Danny Boy. Raul ready to leave, I Raul's think. Out, yeah. Pearl hang. yeah, he's out. Pearl's on a zombie Ooh. pigment taking one hit. It's not going to matter because you can kind of just pearl away from these guys. But that's not amazing damage that you want to be taking here. Yeah. Oh, 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 what is, what is, he's, is he dead? He's dead? He's fully dead. It's just... I'm, I'm going to love to see that analyzed. There's just so many micro things that just went so wrong in the moment. Like, it definitely did not play that situation optimally, but just so many small things. Like, the Pearl low render, eight, low eight, render eight, means eight, that yeah. he needed to panic Pearl down because he oh, didn't know if yeah, there was true. terrain or not at the bottom. So you have to panic Pearl there because if you don't, you're dead to the fall damage. But could you you can't see that, see that the, there's lava. He was, on, he was on low render. Like maybe, yeah, maybe maybe you have a mental picture, you know, before you pearl onto the fort, but it's yeah, that, that, that's pretty, and the that's pretty the low though, yeah. the low render from the zombie piglin situation causes right. more right. strays to spawn in the fort, causing him to pearl on Wither Skelly. Just just insane. That's just, insane just crazy. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Yeah, I and Ral's got info here. He's gonna enter the better lava pool again. That's gonna give him better terrain, but. It is just raw time loss off of death, like this seed. I mean, this seed might be shaping up to be slower than the 16 minute one from our first best of three or best of five. Second one, maybe. Danny taking a lot of damage here too. He's on two and a half. Should be fine. He's got some food. Gets away from the skeleton. But eight minutes and Danny in the lead is about to enter the fortress. One thing I will say that might be good for Raul is that Danny doesn't really know much about Raul's inability situation. To, yeah, because yeah, it does say it does say Raul enter the fortress. Yeah, that is true. He's got the fort split up. Had the advancement First. for just a couple seconds. Oh, but he will know, nerdy, that uh, Raul hasn't gotten a rod. Yeah, so if he's really, really looking yeah. into it, yeah. So he might be a little confused, like, hmm. Raul did enter the fortress, but has not gotten a rod, and I got a rod for my first two blazes. Yeah. Right? So. So you kind of know that um something's up. But Danny, is this over are these overlapping forts? Did you see that kind of weird? Yes. Is this a second fort there. potentially, or is it just a very, very weird, very big fort? Big magma cube in the way. So I got a couple food. Sources. I think this is a second fort. Feels far enough away to be a second fort. Looked like an overlap enough to be a second fort. And Danny's just got to force these strays and he's not getting them done. But I mean, Raul is just still so far behind. I mean, this desert temple overworld being like three minutes long is not doing him any favors. Ooh. Danny loses a rod and falls in. Optimists say that Danny was trying to catch the rod and failed. Pessimists say that Danny um, fell. Pick your side. <laughs> wow. Look at it however you want to. But, I mean, it's giving Ralph some time to catch up. I mean, we saw a perfect catch up against Dougal earlier today. It's possible, even with a death, to still win the seed. And Danny, I mean, just so long in this fort as well, giving Ralph a lot of time. Like, if he just committed to a spawner, I feel like he'd have, like, double his rods right now. Three, four extra, maybe. 
But Danny just still committing to the strays. No, another spawner here. That's a good play. Surely we're done with the strays by now. It just did not work in his favor at all. Three rods only. Have the TNT for Blaze TNT from the temple. There it is. Hopefully gets the Blaze spawns after. Just after. Wow, gets that three spawn. Right back in the Bastion. He knows where the fort is, knows, knows where to get there. Just needs to not die off the pearls again. Here we go. Danny, trying to deal with this this blaze here. I like the It'll come building. up eventually. Surely. Surely. There you go. <laughs> They're so silly sometimes. Like the, the vertical movement, it's so hard yeah. to, well, to they, work with it just... there. They're just like a little, they just want to slow your speed run down a little bit, you know? They're like, ah, I'm not going to... Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Danny's blinding. Oh, my God. I didn't what? even make the connection. He's just blinding. What the hell? I mean, I saw him F3C on Ninbot and like run to better chords. That's four digits. It's a game. Uh, what? What? I, I I mean, he went. I I don't I don't know. I can't tell you. I mean, I guess I guess Nerdy his home portal was in an atrocious spot. Like Rouse is, is not in a good spot, but Danny's home portal is in an atrocious spot. So when you really think about it. I see the line. I see it, right? Like you think, oh, it's gonna like because he has to assume that Ral is um that Ral has a terrible home portal as well. He doesn't know that it's slightly better. Like Ral's is not insane. And there's three digits as well. I think it was the closer offset. Yeah. Danny saved. Okay. But I see the play. Thinking that no, you just gonna, you sense. have to blind. I see it. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it does make sense. It's but. just, it's such a wild play to see in a, in a ranked playoffs. I mean, I think we saw Ankle Boy maybe blind in season one or like Pulsar blind in season one. I don't think it's anybody so... blinded in season two, maybe one person. Like, it, what? this I is like a Rannick for some reason, but I, I could be. This is like a, this is like a once a, once a bracket kind of deal in the quarterfinals, yeah. too. I mean, this is like, this is like a desperation 1 0 down play when you got to win the best of three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I see the line, though. Like, we're talking I about it like it's the worst play I, ever, I, but I see the line. Like I see I, why he I, I did it. Very, very interesting. Yeah. I think I do agree with it because like his his terrain was just so Especially awful. on twelve obsidian as well. Like getting eight obby from backups, very hard to do in housing. I mean you have to get there are like Yeah, true. You could get five backup blocks. Yeah. But apparently yeah, in chat, look, Ral has twenty two, so either Danny missed a chest or something outside, I'm what? not sure. That oh, is something man. that we will see if in the analysis segment for then sure. Then I think it is on Danny because I feel like yeah, you yeah. kind of got to force it as much. Look as at you this! Can. Give it up, Danny! Full sleeping. Probably the first time he's wow. done that in a run in weeks. <laughs> Maybe the this is. I mean, this is just giving Raul the chance to just catch up here, like just straight up. Yeah, Danny must have missed a chest or something or what? I'm not sure, but. It is possible he catches up. I mean, Danny is running on a straight line. I think he's right on this chunk. He's got his cords up. He's got the chunk borders up. He's on the chunk digging down. Could be a weird preemptive, especially because he slept nerdy. There's not going to be mobs on the True. surface. They're going to all be in the caves. True. If they do spawn. True. Not going to yeah, spawn in point. the stronghold. Mobs do mess up preemptive. You can still preemptive through them, but it can't get bad. Has no that's bucket as point. well for a clutch. Has pearls to clutch. Has a bet on the bar, very smart. Yeah, already, like, look at this spike. This is just, this is horrendous. And he has no setting set. That is why it's horrendous. And he gets a good <laughs> spike down right. <laughs> very weird. Like, what wormhole into this five way, I guess? Ooh. That was weird looking. Bad. There but it he is. Finds, the, finds the portal room. And. Probably. Raw, I guess but... just yeah, Rock couldn't make up enough time from his death. Danny gonna pearl twice here. Has three still for zero, but it's so ahead. Not by too much though, maybe only a minute. 
Raw gets one more rod. He's at cords. He's in the he's in the stronghold. Very doable still. Cage, fifty seven. Doesn't necessarily have the pearls. Has to rip this one. Is it too risky? I think you can still get to 95. This is going to be close. He's 91 offset one. Okay. Let's see here. Gets the bat off. Wow, in time. Is this going to be another damage incident, or does he have enough beds? Let's see here. Just needs these last two, and it should be good. Oh, nice. And he's good got damage. one to spare as well. Wow. Reclaims the six bed. Okay. Bounces back after seed one. Danny boy can, in fact, zero cycle. And we're going to a game three, tied up nerdy, one to one. What a series so far. Yeah, wow. great series so far. I mean, just very good play overall. The death from Raul there, I feel like was so unlucky. Like, I mean, there's- Yeah, I mean, it, we won't look at it, but something. there's just so many factors that just all combined together. That just yeah. was not ideal. So hopefully Raul can use the sort of unluckiness of that to refocus and uh not get tilted you know just be like oh well i, d I did what i could you know um and next seed i won't get that same rng and um, but at the same time danny at the, it played the seed pretty well i mean we did see some interesting plays choosing to blind i think makes sense but maybe not forcing the 20 obby was a mistake if you know your home, home portal is so bad right um at the same time, though, I do, you know, Danny clutched up to seed. He hit the zero. Um, good stuff overall from these runners. Yeah, I mean, it's just such a hard situation. I mean, Danny having worse training than Nether, all that jazz. But we're going to get into the full analysis segment in just a second. He's got a lot of clips to compile, a lot of stuff to share with you guys. So we need it just a second there. Maybe we can throw it over to the bracket for people just joining us just see where we are at today, what we've played, what we're playing, what we have left to play. First match of the day, Nerdy, Loki Hacking Noises, a quick 3-0 from Hacking Noises, very unexpected. Taking down the Season 2 reigning champion, Hacking Noises moving on to the semifinals tomorrow, and then our previous match, Priffin versus Dougal, insane best of five, Priffin taking it 3-2, maybe the closest best of five we've ever seen, and we are currently watching... Seven Rao versus Danny Boy. One to one. Getting ready to get into our analysis segment and then go on from there. We're guaranteed at least four seeds, but nerdy, I think we're gonna see five. These runners are playing so neck and neck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean I think there there's a very good chance that we're at least seeing four like four like like you said, and at the end of the day, you know, these two runners are just both so good. And and I, I get I just could just Totally, I, I think it's very likely we'll see a game five. And I'm excited. I'm excited for it. Yeah. I wonder how much you think, too, like the, the, the break now is going to affect their mental, right? Because you play two seats kind of back to back, and then you kind of just have to sit. Maybe you watch the analysis uh, yourself from the mainstream. Maybe you're just thinking. Maybe you're doing practice. We got 10, 15 minutes kind of to ice out, you know, let the nerves simmer or maybe let them build even more. Like, do you think it benefits, you know, maybe one runner over the other? In situations yeah, like maybe, this, maybe maybe the maybe maybe this benefits Danny because uh, well, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but like I could see it benefiting Danny because he's like, okay, I can think back on the last seed and the seed before, but you're not coming off of a loss, right? You're coming off of a win, so you're feeling a little bit more good, you know, um, yeah, sure. able to be more kind of uh, effective in assessing your mistakes, but. At the same time, totally could help Raul if w w with proper mental. I mean, like I said, I I really feel like that death from Raul. I mean, I think okay. Here's here's if I were Raul, I would be thinking okay. Look, I got into the fortress first. I played the seed. I, I made one mistake. I mean, like the mistakes were so like 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 you said, they were just such a snowballing random series of just unlucky things. Yeah. Maybe could have been fixed. Maybe could have been avoided, but just very niche situation that happened, right? And at the same time, came back and you know made up a bunch of that time. I think entered the stronghold. Yeah, like it was a I minute mean, thirty later or something, right? So like close, crazy yeah, really close. stuff. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think if you're Raul, you can just hopefully be like, okay, fair enough. Um, you know, we we will take one loss, but uh, we're just gonna refocus and you know play some good Minecraft.
yeah, I think that's what you've got to do. And this is a banger analysis segment. Got the go-ahead that we are ready, so we're going to throw it over to Fulham to break down those last two games for you guys and see what these runners can do to close out the best of five. So here we go, chat. Our first... Uh, oh, okay, my apologies. Our first clip is going to start off with Danny and Raul's first seed and the very first initial thing that happened here. The, 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 the arguably one of the most important things that happened during this seed was that Danny just decided to go on a little trip and decided not to go for this ship. We can see that he notices this ship, redirects himself to go towards it, but then had already seen this ship earlier on. And we can see that, that he noticed it in uh, in this point of view here. You can see that he's noticing a ship up in his top right corner here. This is uh, just a little bit peculiar, really, that he's decided to go for the ship that's further away. I assume that's because when you look at this ship from this angle, you don't actually notice that there is a... Um, you don't actually notice that there's a food chest. And if there's no food in this, that means it's not the intended shipwreck. However, it's very unlikely to have an unintended shipwreck this close to your spawn island. So I'm not sure if this is actually a correct play from Danny. And we actually see that he does get slightly punished here by going to this further away ship and instead, um, you know, kind of doubling back and forth, having to do a bucketless portal and... Um, Successfully hitting it, which is something that, you know, not everyone can say that they still do. Uh, I certainly don't remember how to do a bucketless portal because I've just been playing ranked my entire life. So it doesn't, you know, in ranked, you're not expected to do bucketless portals ever. So um, the fact that Danny has gone, hit it, and still was able to be competitive in this seed, I think is um, really, really strong. Something that the commentators didn't pick up on at the time was that literally this run, uh, this run, during this run, these players had six rods at the exact same time. They killed the Blaze to get their sixth rod seconds apart. They both now have exactly six rods and are ready to leave the nether at the exact same pace. And um, we can see that Raul is yet to build his portal. So Danny is ever so slightly ahead. Um, and they both spawn in the same spot. And they both do this very cool strategy whereby they both throw a pearl directly upwards, which I think is awesome. Um, just as a way to pretty much guarantee yourself to spawn back on top of the, um, the nether portal. And we can see that Raul is doing the exact same thing on the left-hand side up here. Um landing on the portal in a slightly weirder spot, but does also land back on the portal. Really, really cool show off of the strategy. Um, and so by building the portal slightly higher up for Danny, he's able to spawn above starter staircase and just spots the portal room using Fyro's law. I don't know if he missed starter staircase or if he was maybe like a block off or something, but it was a really, really awesome and arguably pretty lucky um, play to be able to get there. One thing that I noticed is that he just made all 12 eyes rather than going for um, any more pearls, but three is basically all you need. And then he hits the six bed zero, apart from the fact that he doesn't, leaving the dragon on around about five health, goes for the crystal, hits the crystal, takes out most of the dragon's health, goes for it again, misses his second shot, has to recharge the bow, hits it down to like four health, and then just walks off the back of the tower. Obviously, he has no... Nothing to be able to clutch with apart from this one ender pearl, which wasn't on his hotbar, which does suck because, um, you know, two eyes of ender aren't necessary. Boat is there, but there's no water bucket as the commentators were able to pick up on because he did the bucketless portal earlier on. So ended up uh, taking a death there and Raul was able to take seed number one. Danny then had no terrain after building his portal using a slightly different lava pool in the overworld. So it was just digging down for absolutely years and years and years and years, um, which was definitely a little bit disappointing. And once he eventually did find terrain, he was in the bastion a long time afterwards. 
However, on this 480p zero bitrate clip, we're going to see exactly what happened to Raul here. So, eats some food. Uh, doesn't have any good food, particularly in the hot bar right now. Uses gravel and sandstone to build up so that the gas fireballs don't actually make him fall. Throws a good pearl, gets the stake out. And lands straight on a zombie pig uh, piglin. Um, and causing the piglins to all get angry at him. Uh, he takes another. He takes one single hit of damage here, but lowers his render distance to try and unload uh, those zombie pigs that are behind him. Throws this pearl. He's on two render distance. Has to try and walk towards the pearl. Literally crosses into a chunk border so that he lands on the fortress. Lands directly on top of these skeletons. There's a zombie piglin in here as well. This with a skeleton is able to knock him straight off the fortress two and a half hearts left can't tell if there's lava below has to pearl no food no health and just dies at the bottom of the lava it is not ideal um definitely in this situation had uh had priffin have gone into this situation we know that when priffin was falling off of the block earlier the first thing that he did was pause now, this is obviously a strategy that isn't really uh, looked on particularly fondly in MCSR. We don't like to pause abuse. However, in ranked, I guess it's a much more standardized situation because all of the pause time still counts towards your final time. So in this case, very specifically, Raul may have had a lot of benefit to actually hitting pause and then increasing his render distance. By increasing his render distance, he's going to notice that there's a lava pool below. He can have three seconds to think and go, okay, I can just fall into this lava. I'll be alive. I can chug my steak and I'll be alive in this situation. Instead, because he's on such low render distance and can't F3F to increase his render distance fast enough, he instead just goes for the pearl. But by being on two and a half hearts, he instantly dies as soon as he throws that pearl. This allows Danny to come back in the seed, but not after a hell of a lot of trying to throw. From this situation where he's trying to get this blaze rod, um, potentially, or maybe he slipped, or, you know, I, I, I can't analyze this. Um, but the ghast moves the blaze out over the lava, and then he just falls. He just does fall. He totally just falls. He doesn't... He, he doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> he didn't try and go for it. And then he's gone for a blind travel rather than going for 20 obby. Now, a lot of chat was saying, ah, he didn't get the backup blocks. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, chat, you, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. He did go and get the backup blocks, and I will show you that in a few seconds. But you can see here, getting an 1855 blind travel is not what you want to see. Luckily, he threw a second eye, and it was the 700 um, blind distance, which is the, one of probably the only reasons that he won the second seed. But let's travel all the way back to Danny's Bastion. This is something that I don't think anyone was particularly paying attention on because Raul was so far ahead. People were focusing on Raul. This, chat, is the bottom double chest. This is the chest that you run into Manhunt, the double chest right there. The bottom double chest has 10, uh, sorry, I think 9 obsidian. Now, if Raul picked this up, he'd be able to have 20 obby and use two portals. As far as I can tell, now, I was trying to make uh, the commentators buy me time, and they did. They did a great job of buying me as much time as possible so I could scan through Danny's VOD. I don't think he checked the bottom double chest. I may be wrong. However, I don't think he checked the bottom double. Now, let's move on. He did get the backup blocks. He did get the backup blocks here. And we can see that. So it wasn't that he got 8 obby from the backup blocks, but he may have got 8 or 9 obby from that double chest down there. But we can see here that he doesn't directly go for it. He's grabbing some extra pigs. This is fantastic. But you can see, while he looks down here, there's no indication that Raul has mined through this to check the double chest. There's no blocks broken in this bottom corner down here. After this point, he hasn't gone and checked that double chest. So, I don't think he did. Maybe I missed it. And if he, if he, if I did miss it, I'm sorry. I didn't have enough time to go and watch everyone's POV a hundred times over. But I can tell you what he did miss. 
and it was these chests at the top. He went up to these chests, grabbed this triple. After pearl hanging, notice that there's another triple in the background. These are these are both triple chests. This is a this, there's a triple here. There's a triple. There, there's there's three more chests that he can check, and you can also notice it when he pearls up. Th these are both the same rampart. They both have. Th one double chest and one single chest. But Danny only grabs this right side triple chest. And we can see after grabbing just this right side triple. Wait, I'm a fraud. He goes and grabs this one as well. I'm lying to all of you. <laughs> I thought this was genius analysis. It's not. He does go and grab the wall. <laughs> sorry, I wrote the script and I forgot. I'm so sorry. I was too thinking about Danny mewing. Um, Sorry. So he must have forgotten the double chest at the bottom because that is the only part of the bastion that he has missed. I I, I must apologize. Uh, my my apologies. Um, he did go and check these chests. What he didn't chest check is the double chest at the bottom, and that's where the rest of the obsidian was. So after that, obviously, Danny was able to clutch out the zero cycle. And after frantically racking my brains to try and find where he missed this obsidian, I clearly wasn't able to clip the zero cycle. But this was a frantic seed. That is something that we can all agree on. It went back and forth between these runners and we saw Raul take a death. Hopefully, we're going to see a clean run from both of these runners in the next few seeds. It is one to one right now in this best of five. Who's going to get the first? Who's going to be the first player to get three seeds in this best of five? Is it going to be Raul, our number one seed, or is it going to be Danny? Best of luck to both runners. Going to send you guys back over to the commentators now, and I will see you soon. Once again, some more W mid match analysis from Fulham. Always appreciated. Always good to look back and see. And Danny just did miss that hobby chest. And I mean, I think he was just maybe flustered from, you know, getting the bad enter, right? Like you see Raul get the bashing advancement, and you're still digging through a wall at Y100. And it's yeah. like, what did I do wrong? Like, what did he do? What did he do right? What did I do wrong? You're thinking like, what, like what happened? And then you just miss small things and that's that. So, I mean, he bounced back though, won the seed. So I think uh, we can throw it over the seed pick ban screen, but I'm pretty sure we are playing a room portal seed for our seed three. And we are very, very exciting, potentially a very fast seed. I mean, definitely need a rebound after a 16 minute slugfest between these two players. I mean, not really to either of their faults, potentially. It was just a rough seed. But very, very excited to see the seed three. I think, uh, I think the players are ready to get into it. I think we're ready to get into it. See who can take our two-to-one lead. You know, it's kind of like, it's it's like we're just in a best of three now. You know, we did the first two seeds. They're even. It's a best of three at zero, zero. A little bit different mentally, but kind of the same thing, right? Not sure. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean, this is... Yeah, no, I, I, I do know what you mean, Pyberg. I do, I do. Ugly room portal potentially. Oh, but there's four iron and there's flint. And there's the... I, I, I like or four iron, too. four obby. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry, no, this is good. This is fully completable with the obsidian and pickaxe and cows. This is a good potential low one enter with food, all your jazz. That's what I like I to see in these seeds. These are, I think room portal seeds are just my favorite. I, I just, I like seeing like, it makes, I just go fast is cool. You know, I, like it. I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's in my opinion, you know, I, I enjoy that. So I'm excited for this. See how many cows these runners will be grabbing. Probably just the ones here. Hopefully not wandering too much into the water. Definitely some RNG here and you know, how the cows run, how they wander, but also some skill and can you hit your, hit your axe hits, you know, a little bit of Minecraft aim labs, so to speak. Yeah. And you can sort of position yourself in between the cow and the water. Raul gets a nice hit there. That's eight. Steak, Danny on the same cow path as well. Getting some nice cow wandering here. Just nice. has the last one to go, and he's not going to kill the last one. He's going to stay on five, and Raul's got eight, and Raul's faster. Very, yeah. very interesting here. Danny's skipping this gold block as well, so he is going to actually enter quicker, but he's down three stake and a gold block. Wow. Yeah. That is not, not a trade I would take, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's only like a second or something compared to Raul, right? So. And look at this. I think uh, Raul may be taking yeah. better terrain right here right away. 
going down left. I think Danny's just going to have to go down left eventually as well here. Ooh, yeah. Maybe he can no. go up on the right. Interesting. Ooh. Not super clear. Maybe Danny does take the better terrain because Rao has to go two left and then cut back right in the same spot. Almost these runners at the same exact time heading into this very housing. Very similar, yeah. But let's see. Danny Rao's might be going for Danny might be going for mid down here or a flex into top down. Rao getting an aggro. Oh, and this is freaking dry manhunt. But Danny realizes as well. Oh my oh. god, Danny's getting He's okay. destroyed. We're all in an okay spot as well. Both runners make it out and doing almost the same thing. Ral flexing up to these backup blocks first. Ral on more health though, with and more way food. more food. Yeah, way yeah. more food. Very Anything unclear bad. here. Yeah, very unclear about who's faster in this bastion route as well. Getting the triple backups first versus second. I think it's good to grab them first. You get a little bit more pigs started. But I think it's maybe more important when you don't have the manhunt pigs as well. Danny's got so many pigs from manhunt. These pigs are all trading so early, so fast. I guess you don't have to deal with late pigs potentially. Very unclear always. So much bastion variance. So many decisions that you have to make. Yep. I'm going to go to the top for Obby as well. These runners have no Obby out of the manhunt chest or the double chest there. So will be some guaranteed in the top. Not sure how much. danny has got three, maybe four beds, 22 pearls. We're going to have the same exact trades when his pigs are done. And they're done. Oh, he's got way more pearls. Wow. What happened to... Oh, Ral has the extra gold block, nerdy. Right. No, that's... I forgot. That might just literally be like two pearl trades. Look, he's got an extra stack of pearls on Danny. A full stack. Yeah. It's got to be that, right? Is this going to be Obby, though? Look at this. 19 and 22 for Ral. Ral grabs this room portal gold block and Danny has 19 obby. I, th I think you're right. And Danny's just gonna die almost. Two hearts. Only had oh, one this distraction is not good gold. For Danny. This this gold block room portal diff might just be the seed decider. I think people I think Danny had a uh, a gold block stolen from him as well. Um, oh right. I forgot about that. From as the well. man yeah. chest, yeah. That's just 18 gold gone. Yeah, he's going to dig to these uh, hoplite level backups here. The three plus one over here on the back side of the housing. Interesting way to dig into these. But he's getting there. But Ral is just building this lead. Yeah, I mean, just cementing the... the, the oh, Danny, the the there making. he is. There's the gold blocks. One, two, three. It's the decision making. Danny definitely getting a little unlucky that a piglin stole his um his gold block, but he didn't get the gold block in the room portal as well. Definitely could have been a decision maker in this twenty obsidian. Surely he'll get it off of three though. There it is. I think he's maybe waiting for some more string. Three bed, two anchor right now. Not the best zero situation, but I think he's at three bed, three anchor. Oh yeah, um, Ral have Ral has only four explosives, I think. Not sure about the bed count, but two anchors. I think I saw two anchors, two beds. So Danny might have zero, which is interesting because they. I feel like Ral traded more. Maybe I think he blaze bedded, or didn't wait for glowstone or something. Danny getting some strays here as Ral measures. Yeah, we will see. Oh, that's a pearl back. Ooh. Misses the block clutch. Pearl again. Oh, did I oh my god. Third pearl oh. overshoots. Oh my god. What oh, really... a what a throw. Shake of the mouse. Is he gonna Number go for four. it again? Number four. There and we go. There we are. Fourth time the charm, as they say. As they say. As they say, as they say. They do say that. Look at Danny. 
Four rods in the fort as well. Doesn't have location of the stronghold, but has the same amount of rods that Ral does and potentially zero explosive quality. And Ral doesn't. But Ral's able to leave quickly, though. Got his two rods and he's gone. Yeah, I think that's two beds, two anchors only. I think there's no zero for Ral here. Oh my god, wow. Danny's eyes in the tree. So unlucky. As Ral has the cords. Hey, quick half bow can be very fast. Room portal? <laughs> Just does not need to grab this stuff. It's funny, though. Danny gets his boat eye measurement. Is he out of food, I wonder? Not sure how much steak we have left from this seed. Yeah. It's, I think he Danny, is. Danny, okay. I was gonna say, no, he's he got two steaks. Two steak. He's got two steak? Okay, okay. Ryle's got two four steak. steak as well. Ryle cranking these gold picks. Wonder if they're heading to the same or different strongholds, blinding at different spots. Ryle doesn't have the best terrain here. Danny gets the last rod. Wow. Not sure if they're heading to the same spot or not, but Ryle is building his portal. I think they're heading to different strongholds. It looks like Danny's oh. taking way different terrain. Might be able to catch up a lot here. And again, yeah. the nav could be very different. No, they are different. It looks like Danny's going negative, negative. Yeah. Ral gets a good spike. Can't seem to make it that way in the stronghold, though. Is it down here? I think he needed a left turn, but it could be this. Oh, no. it's not that. Danny building on his portal right now. Uh, does Danny claw back the time just by the stronghold being more linear? Let's see. Ral's got to find the direction. It should be here. Maybe he's got the direction. Maybe top left. No. Maybe middle goes left. Maybe it's oh. here. should be here. There it, there is. it is. That's where the spike was. That's where it says. He's got the food. He's There's got zero. no explosives for zero, though. Yeah, again. Can Danny find this portal room quickly? He does. He does. And I think Danny has five, maybe six explosives. Is he going to go for it? Yeah. He's got six uh, explosives and yeah, Ra has no, four. I'm not sure how that it. happened with less trades, but he's going to be able to go for zero. And this is time enough to where Danny can easily take this seed. It's back, but it's not that tall. This is very, very hittable. Nice pearl. Easy 95 here. Just need good damage. Got so much time to a full rotation here. If it flies, it's game over, but it doesn't. That's some good damage. That's that was impressive as well. Just needs to make sure that KB is good enough. That's anchor. Wow. Did he it's not use a, fi a fifth bed or did he double bed yeah, maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe he, only had, maybe he only had two beds. I think but he hit it either way. Anchors or something like that. Yeah. I thought he had three beds, but uh, he clutched wow. it. It's the zero again. And look at this. Ralph gets a perch. Losing mid perch, wasn't even looking. Gets a fast half bow perch and just has to know that Danny Zero looking at the splits. But I just, I wonder, wonder if Ral didn't split his explosives or if Ral didn't, um, I don't know. Because Danny, Danny had to get more extra backups that Ral didn't to successfully get 20 obsidian. So I don't know what happened with the explosives. Yeah. But Danny's got them. And it gives him a 2-1 lead in this series, putting Ral on match point wow. for potentially two seeds in a row. And that's crazy because like he he was just kind of behind for this entire seed and it didn't matter. The zero just carried. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Looking at the splits, I mean, Danny just climbed back a little bit of time here and there. I mean, lost a minute and a half. To the Forge Center because of the backup blocks, but every split after that, just saving time. Different strongholds, saving time on the train, saving time on the nav. All of that. Beautiful Great play. Great stuff overall. Yeah. What is Rao going to pick? BT. I mean, he picks Danny Boy's band, sure. I mean, maybe I'd pick the Shipwreck if I knew that Danny had such a crazy experience on the Shipwreck seed, but... I like the BT pick. It's what they banned for a reason. I think this is a, makes sense, right? Very, yeah. very um, standard pick situation. Ral now has to he has to play undefeated from here on out. It's very possible winning two matches for Ral should is not you know unheard of by any means. But 
all, every like you said, you know, his tournament is on the line at this point. He's got to play. He he cannot lose any more matches today. Yeah. I mean, he's just got to win two in a row. But if there's any way to start, it's picking what your opponent banned. Right. And yeah, ready to get right into it. This could potentially be Raul's last seed. If he loses, our one seed, Nerdy, has won every playoff so far. And now as they're yep. back against the wall. Look at this, Raul. Oh, it's a room portal spike, but is this the BT as well? He's digging on 8-9. So unclear if this is a spike or not. These runners are both trusting this, though. Okay. Looks a little bit goofy, but... Gonna commit to it, though. Is it four deep? They're both committing, and Danny's taking a lot of suffocation, and it is! Danny's gonna die for this. Danny's gonna die for this! <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have to nice. get his stuff. Rescanning to see where he died, but it, it saves health. It's slow, but... I kinda like it. I think it works, you know? <laughs> He's got to grab his stuff. Where'd the iron go? Where'd all his items go? So far. Is he... And that's some... Wow, that's some good food from that room portal and light and everything. This is a very good seed. Darn. I think he grabs the iron there's there the... as well, yeah. And there's the salmon. All right, nice. Yeah. Saving the health, honestly, didn't really matter because there's eight golden carrots along with the BT food, but he didn't know that until he died. Looks like but Raul's, this is giving Raul, Raul, Raul a, a little bit better. huge advantage. Yeah, I mean, I guess Raul didn't die, you know? Like, that does yeah. that does matter. Like, Danny did die. Dude, Raul's doing, like, a like a left-handed two-by-one. I don't know how to explain that better, but I swear I'd never see anyone approach it from that direction. And there's the Bastion Spike. Yeah, wow, Raul's way ahead of here. This is crazy. Yeah. I mean, he was just um, committed to the BT. Got right. some air in the middle, but just fully committed and trusted his spike. And, I mean, Danny did too, but Danny just died for it. And Raul didn't. That's the biggest uh, biggest difference. Yep. So you got a treasure Look at this. here. Treasure mm -hmm. fashion. Next to the fortress, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the first intersecting structures we've seen today. Ooh, missing a block clutch. But, again, so much food in this seed. You do have a Thorn's chest spite, so you do have to be a little cautious. If a piglin hits you, you might hit them back and not know it. I think it's a little bit weird with the aggro situation, but honestly, it should be very safe having Thorn's chest plate. Anyway, we're now heading to the treasure as well. Not insanely far behind, but it is time loss. If the seed ended right now, Rao would win. He just has to keep this lead through the rest of the seed. But a very simple treasure route we're probably going to see from both runners. And then a one Pearl Fort. Just going to see how many trades we get, how much obby, how many beds, things like that. Because the food situation is perfect. How does Rao have a pig there on the left? Go. Go. There he goes. Oh, another one he's saving as well. Nice block off there. Bait the pig. Good pathfinding management. Really not much yeah. to talk about. Default bastion route. Yep, I mean, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's it's well played. You know, I mean, I find treasure to be the hardest bastion, so they're not dying, and I'm happy about that. You know, I I, I would be I would, I'd be I'd be hyped to be in this position of being in a treasure and not dead. That that's what I would say. True. Treasure's the worst bastion. What can I say? The worst bastion, you know. I wouldn't but, go that uh, far, nerdy. It's it's the worst bastion, man. I don't I don't know what to say. It's it's impossible to route, and that's what makes it, you know, slower. Is that if if it's if something's impossible to route, like you know, physically, mechanically, then it's not, you know, it, it's worse. You know what I mean? Um. So. What are uh, you? What? Are... My logic. What are you, what well, are you if, if, it, if it if it needs to be task perfect in order, because like that's the only reason why I can't do it right it consistently is because it needs to be task perfect, right? So logically, <laughs> that in theory is faster. Yeah, sure, whatever. People are lying. It's it's not actually good. 
I refuse. Interesting to, uh... situation though here. As near the app, standing by his 13 obby, Rao similar. Rao is 17 actually. I think he's been finessing more of these backups. 19 obby from Rao. How does he have so much more than Danny? Maybe Danny's just super waiting on trades here. Yeah, Rao gets 20 and he's gone. I mean, Rao was in this bastion early. But I think Danny might have less pigs as well. Oh, this is a big advantage for Raul. Danny's going. He's going to play home portal, I think. He's just leaving on this, like, 15-16 Avi. Going to have to get a Pearly over to home portal. I really don't think we're going to see Danny blind again. There's that Pearl hang. There we go. Navving towards the spawner. Raul gets there first. Danny has limited visibility because of the Pearl hang render distance. But he's got two strays up here. I think Raul is still in the driver's seat in the seed there, Nerdy. Through everything. Just ahead in the four. I like 20 Abby way more than I like 10. Yeah, I mean, it creates variance. Same, same thing we've seen in the last seeds, you know? Um... Creates a lot of variance, man. But Raul can overlap a lot more than Danny is. Danny, I mean, forcing actually a lot of strays out of this crimson, like. Floor fort, which is very impressive, but I'm gonna expect to see him have to play a spawner soon. A spawner that Ral has already blaze betted. And Denny jumping up at the wrong block. But let's see here. I just think Ral's gonna have much better overlap here. He's able to craft everything, able to build his portal already. It's just so nice on, on forts like this where you can't really play strays. Um, you're just able to kind of sort of sit and relax and. Get everything ready so you can pop in that stronghold, pop in the portal room, and just instantly whip the eyes. No prep needed. Which is just so important. No Nimba on screen for Rao is going to do this pearl trick again because it's an ocean. Oh, this is so it. far down, though. You get it? I think he got it. it. I think he got it. Yeah, he's got an even number. Plus, yeah, he crafted yeah. weird. I think, he, I think he barely, barely, barely. got it. <laughs> it was so close. But he does, yeah. And Danny, I mean, Danny has so many strays. I just have no idea how these are cranking. But they are. I think it's Rao's game to lose, though. Apparently, people in chat saying Danny also has no zero. He did leave the trades early. That would make sense. All the cards point to Rao winning this seed, sending us to a seed five. But again, we will see. So much food still left over as well. Golden curse for both these players. Danny looking for his home portal. Forgot where we entered this seed. No F3C on the Ninbot, I guess, to know where he's going. Completely lost. Yeah. But you're so committed. You you have to you have to find it somehow. Was it this height here? Oh, that's so. That's... That's, I mean, that that is one of the big advantages of 20, though, right? And Rao keeps yeah. going for it. Like, I feel like it is a bit unlucky, but at the same time, like, I feel like it, you know, it's a decision that Danny made. Yeah, I mean, and Danny's most definitely already lost this seed unless Rao definitely, like, dies in the one cycle. But you, this is just not a good thing for the mental at all to be just completely yeah. lost in a seed that you're playing. This is not good. Danny's going to have to shake this off somehow. Still looking for the home portal. It's a very easy thing to play around as well. If you just F3C when you enter, it'll kind of uh, exist on your Nimbot cords. Uh, a little bit of a hacky way to always remember where your home portal is. And Danny Interesting. doesn't do this. So he's lost. As Rao enters the end, no zero attempt again. Not sure if there was a lack of... Um, Explosives or pro clip. I was, I was watching Danny Boy's screen, but I think is he like going back to try to trade for 20 maybe instead of blinding, or maybe he's gonna blind on the pigs and try to task roll up trades here. I mean, it's gonna go to a game game five, nerdy. Must row colossal level throws here. Danny is um, just a little too far behind, does not have the stuff he needs. 
has no idea where the stronghold is even. Is that this perch for Raul? It is. There's the perch. Does he get there in time? Should take us to a game five. He Let's might only have four here. explosives, but that was a very... Oh, oh my, my god. god. Three bed the dragon. What a three plus one. <laughs> nice one cycle. Perfect height. Perfect explosion damage. Cranking a square. A rectangle. A little bit Fantastic of speed building. Stuff. Barely not a sub 10, but yeah. That sends us to a C5. Two to two. I mean, we can look at the splits here, but it's not really going to show much. I think very similar yeah. pace, but... Danny just has to play 10 instead of 20, and that was the entire difference on the seed, where I was able to overlap so much more. Yep. And Danny got completely lost in the sauce. I mean, I feel like that's the thing we've seen, like, on three different seeds now, where Raul has 20, Danny has 10. And uh, I feel like this is just the, like, you know, Danny's won some of the other matches, but I feel like this was, like, you know, kind of the odds catching up to him, right? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's very interesting. But at the end of the day, I feel like Raul made the right decision. Yeah, and it paid off. I mean, 20, mostly always better than 10. I mean, there is some variance, but yeah, I mean, made the right decision. And I think we, uh, we can throw it into a very quick full analysis segment on these last two seeds. See if there's anything that these runners need to instantly fix before... Their seed five match point for both players. See you all move on tomorrow. Well, chat, I have been strictly instructed to keep this quick by Big Boss. So I am going to do exactly that. We have just five clips to go through. A few mistakes from both runners. I think that is probably what is most, uh, has been most important. These mistakes haven't been uh, particularly prevalent throughout. They've instead been quite minute. But it's these minute mistakes that are really causing big problems later on. So we can see here in this first seed, Raul had to throw four pearls to try and land on this, uh, this portal. One, two, third one goes straight over the portal, lands in the water behind. And it's just, you know, a small time loss. But 15, 20 seconds is all you need to win a seed, especially when there's these caliber of players. 15 to 20 seconds are, you know, is a long time. So that was a slight mistake by Raul there. And again, we're also going to see a little mistake here from Danny. Um... I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even particularly say mistake. I would say unlucky, perhaps. You know, it's, it's pretty difficult to uh, predict this, maybe going to a slightly different spot. But the eye goes in the overhang of that tree. There's not even a lot of tree that the eye can go behind. But it has to go behind this section here. There's a whole... You, you, you turn around, it can go in any of the other directions. Like, there's, there's just straight ocean. There's straight ocean. Like, if it goes anywhere to the left, it goes over sea. It, it, it's not going to get blocked off. But here, it gets blocked, and you can't see where that uh, eye is exactly pointing. Obviously, we need to use a calculator to find out where it is. So it's a very precise lineup on the eye. Um, so he has to move to the side and throw a second eye. Just losing a little bit of time does suck a little bit, but it does happen. Uh, and then in our second seed... Danny was struggling to get to the buried treasure. Finally does get the buried treasure and then dies. Um, so has to go and rescan to find where the... Uh, to find where... <laughs> to where his dropped items went. Has to go and reloot to get the rest of the gold and the food. Goes and finds his iron. Goes to this ruined portal as well. And then also in this seed, he couldn't find his home portal. We didn't know where the home portal was either. He lost his iron, then he lost his portal. Danny is frequently misplacing things, and we need that not to happen in our fifth and final seed if we want him to take this victory. I'm going to make it quick. I said I'd make it quick, but I am just going to say for our fifth seed, this is our second time that we've gone to a match five. These matches have all been immense, and I'm so, so grateful for all six of these runners. Thank you guys for all supporting us. 
uh, watching, whether it is on the English stream or on any of the other language restreams. We really appreciate you guys um, and giving both of these runners, runners the best of luck in this final seed. And yeah, we'll see who can take it home. Next seed is the most important one. Whoever wins this one moves on to tomorrow's semifinals. Best of luck. Yeah, W analysis from Fulham pointing out a couple things that, I mean, it's just going to be who locks in the best in seed five. Danny picking Desert yep. Temple. He won on the Desert Temple seed. Not the prettiest. 16-minute victory. Look at this, Nerdy. Seed three and seed four the exact same time on the seeds. 10-0-1 for both of them. Very interesting. But again, yeah, what Fulham said too, a huge shout out to the co-streams that we have going on in Spanish and Polish today. I mean, a lot more exposure is awesome. I love the love the reach that we can have and just letting more people enjoy the, the crazy Minecraft gameplay. Very, very awesome that we were Absolutely. able to provide that for you guys. And very awesome that we were able to provide some W gameplay. And with that, I mean, I'm ready to watch the C5 nerdy. Second C5 of the day. Yeah. I don't know I if mean, it can top. I don't know if it can top the last C5 though. Like I don't know if that, it can. That was something but, else. But here's what I want. All right. Listen. All right. 1058. Then a 16 something, then a 1001, just barely not sub 10, then yeah. another 1001, barely not sub 10. This seed is gonna, this seed five, this is about to be the, the, the sub 10. And that's what's a gonna be. A desert temple or world get, sub 10, you think? Who can get the sub 10? That's, that's what I'd like to see to decide this match. I think that would be a lot more hype than a 16 minute desert temple seed. I agree. I, would agree I agree. But it is, it is rare. I wonder. Wonder like looking at the rank stats, like you could definitely pull it with the um excuse me, with the API or something, like how many desert temple seeds are sub tens compared to like ruin portals? Like ruin portals gotta be like five or ten times more likely to sub ten. Because a lot of like we've seen Desert Temple like enters in the playoffs so far be like three, three and a half minutes. And it's like the runners really aren't doing anything wrong. It's just like you have to get your food, you have to get your blocks, the water can be somewhere weird, the flint can be somewhere weird. Um, let's see, looks like yeah, no, Danny was just getting some water, and I think we're good to go. All right. We are and... going to throw it over to the gameplay. I just These runners, I mean, they got to put it all on the line. If you make it to tomorrow, there's a very real chance that you can walk away with $3,000 first place prize. And more importantly, some pixels on your Minecraft spiriting rank profile in the shape of a trophy. Colored gold. That is arguably more important than three bands. Depends and on who you ask. Let's see here. I don't even see the temple. There. Wait, I still don't even see the temple. Well, there, it's got to be in the desert. I still so... don't even see it. Where? Okay, there it is. Okay. There it is. Okay. It does just have to be in the desert. So the runners do kind of know where they're going. And there is a village here for some food, I think. And could play. Yeah, interesting seed. Very, very interesting seed. Going to look like a village food potentially for both runners. I don't even know what this is, okay? I don't even know what this is. I actually don't even know. I'm out of the loop, man. I don't even know what this meme is. I'm sorry. Nerdy, nerdy sorry to nerdy I'm, so, I'm sorry to disappoint. I don't understand the meme. But anyways. Um, it's okay, Nerdy. You can, have, uh, you can learn later. That okay. is okay. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude. I like being in the loop about memes. I, I you know, you, you know me, guys. I, I like, I like including some memes into the commentary, but I, I actually just don't understand. I'm sorry. True. But disappoint, you know. But hey, it's That's okay. okay it is okay, bro. Look at this, though. Danny boy going for the food. Ral a little bit away from the village. Surely he will go back, though. He's throwing out all his rotten flesh. So Ral, I think, will take a pit stop at this village also. But I'm curious to see where these runners are going to grab their flint. Where are they going to grab their water? Always the questions you ask on these Desert Temple Seeds. What are we doing for our stuff? But we have our iron. We have our food. Those questions are answered for both runners. Are we just woodlighting too? Could very easily be a woodlight seed. Danny going to face check yeah. this cave for some gravel. Does he see something? And he's crafting, but I'm not sure if it's to grab this water or to actually grab gravel down here. I don't know. 21 bread. Love to see that. And yeah, he's going down here. Surely it's not just for the water. You can get that in the, in the village. Yeah, there's gravel down here. Nice play from Danny. Checking this cave. 
Is Raul going to have to woodlight? I think he is. He's got 43 logs or planks. I think Raul's going to commit the woodlight and he's going to start this a lot faster. But is it going to catch up? Oh, early light there. A little too early. Danny doesn't have great uh, flint rates either. We will see. It's going to be very close. Yeah. Will Raul get the woodlight? Nice, using that crafting table. Danny, I think going the wrong way for the enter. Unless he saw another oh, no. lava pool over here. Oh, yeah, he did, it looks like. Okay, thought it was more to the left. And Raul is in, though. And Danny hasn't even yeah. started building his portal. So a notable pace advantage for Maybe, yeah, uh, 15, 20 seconds for Raul here. Which is a lot of time in these overworlds. And Danny will be able to instantly light, so... No time loss to the wood lighting, but yeah, like you said, about 15 seconds of time loss. And yeah, we'll see if it yeah. matters. Ross oh, sees Raul the bridge. The Danny's scanning the bridge as well. Both runners spawn at very similar terrain. Danny's going to figure out how to get around this here. Oh no, looking in caves here. I feel like they were both in this open area. Maybe Danny just has to go around. I think Raul potentially went around and hooked in. Using the TNT yeah, I think this is what that. Danny has to do here. Yeah, good play from Danny. Nice terrain nav. Doesn't get stuck like the basalt seed. Okay. But Raul is just starting this route faster. Is just clear cut ahead on this split. Has a little bit less food, but 13 bread should still be more than enough for the whole seed. And look at this route from Raul, just a very weird Benex style route here. Colloquially known as Benex route. Danny's dead. Danny's dead. A full reset. I wasn't, I, I was mean, watching Raul. I didn't see what happened. Yeah. I just I'm, got knocked out by Hoglin. Yeah, I was looking at Raul's route. It said Danny fell swimming lava trying to escape Hoglin. Yeah, he must have just gotten knocked in by a hog. That is unfortunate. Potentially a playoffs ending death. For Danny Boy. Yeah, so long as not Raul... what you want to see at all. Oh, we'll have to see here. Is Danny gonna be able to maybe catch up somewhat based on the fact that he now knows stuff about the seed? He can make certain time saves in various areas, but it's gonna be really hard. He's like basically Danny's just Danny's behind. been zeroing. Raw has not been zeroing. It's yeah, that is true. I just feel like Ral has been faster on average, though. I don't know. Not looking good. No, not looking good if you're a Danny Boy fan. A lot of time loss. And there's just, this overworld just takes so long to get everything you need. Even if you know where it is, he knows where this gravel is, but just gonna take so long. And Ral's already going. That was such a fast. Bridge, he's already wow. in the fortress center. What a crazy second pearl, too. Clipping him right into the top of the fort. Yep. Needs to find a spawner, but it's he's so far ahead. He doesn't know that yet, but he will soon. As Danny just continues to play the seed without getting any bastion advancements, without getting any fortress advancements. Yep. Is so ahead. And he will learn it soon. And it should goes. just be game over. I mean, that, will Raul go for zero, do you think? I mean, we ha I don't think we've seen Raul go for zero yet. Um, it's, just, it's been weird towers, but I, yeah, I mean, I think he maybe went for a one seed, but it, it's so much time, Nerdy, that Danny Boy has well, to make I, up. I, I, I agree, but I'm wondering, like, potential areas that Danny, that, that Raul could... Could, could like, choke. die? Yeah, yeah, I, see that. I, I see. think that I would see. be maybe one, but he might just not go for it if he knows he's that far ahead. Yeah. He's about but to it's just, here. it's so much time that Danny, and he's going to this other lava pool, I guess a little bit of time save. He's making up the time pretty well, but it's just so much time that he has to make up. It requires Raul to make a mistake for a Danny boy to win. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I, 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 I think Raul has just got this in the bag. And I mean, huge credit to Raul, right? Like, I mean, 
not only has, has Raul taken some unfortunate deaths in this, uh, like actually unfortunate, like unlucky deaths in this uh, mm -hmm. in this series, but but he's been, you know, uh, just playing really well overall, making good decisions, not always getting the results, like just from basically luck, in my opinion, for a lot of the stuff. But finally, he's just, you know, playing consistently and it's it, in the end, it's working out for him. Yeah. Take two for Danny at the bridge. Oh, no. Okay. That's a lot of mobs still, but he should be fine. But again, I Raul's just so far ahead, needs one or two more rods and can go to cords. Has so many beds for zero as well. Has a gap, eight bread. Perfect situation if you're Raul. And you just know still, Danny Boy has not triggered any more Bastion advancements, any Fort advancements yet. You know you are so incredibly far ahead. Right. Okay, nice pearling out there. It's not a brutal death for Danny Boy. And Nerdy, you were talking about sub-10, and there's the two rods at 816. Is it possible that Raul takes the sub-10? I mean, might need a zero for that. I'm not sure how far away the cords are, but it is possible with fast nav. Got to get this portal down. That's to be really fast, but I believe, I believe. I wonder if he might not play as fast as he should, you know, or like could because of uh, knowing that he's so far ahead, right? I think that's not a bad idea at all if I were Ral. I think I would do the same thing. There's the portal coming down. This needs to be like 10 second nav nerdy, which is possible, but with no settings changes that, uh, that you need, you know. It's going to be very hard, yeah. Got the spike bottom right. I think the sub 10 dream is over nerdy. It's okay. But this it's is going to okay. be the portal I... room. Ral's played very well. That's all I could ask for. Yeah, this is going to be looking like a low 10 with a zero potentially. And Danny Boy just still trying to fight his way back into the fort. It's just, unfortunately, death just is too punishing. Does he go for the zero here? Let's see. I would have to die. It's back. I think he's going to go for it, yeah. Makes sense. You're confident. Can Move easily get to, to 95 here. There's 95. Gets the anchors as an entire turn left to spare. And so many explosives just have to keep the dragon up. Nice. Good job on the KB on those beds. Nice six bed setup here. Potentially even seven, but who minds? And that's going to be it, Nerdy. Raw's going to take boy. our third best of five of the day. On. Yeah. And this is like, I mean, this is what we uh, sort of. Expected from around the previous tournaments, now he's like really living up to, uh, you know, his skill, I feel like. Yeah, the number one seed is staying in the tournament. The streak continues of number one seeds potentially winning. They have won season one and oh, season two playoffs. Yeah. But yeah, just a, a four minute death for Danny Boy. I mean, the split, I think he barely got in the fortress by the time Raul won the seed, but... It is what it is sometimes. It's just some, some mistakes are, you know, five, ten second mistakes, like a missed pearl, but sometimes you miss a pearl and it's five minutes. And what can you do? And unfortunately, Danny just had one too many of the big ticket mistakes. And that's that. I mean, it was very well played, best of five. Very, yeah. very well played. But. Ryle and Prippen now, both. That's going to be a banger semifinals <laughs> match, I'll tell you that. Players, yeah. yeah, both winning off of these best of fives as well. You think there's a 3-0? You think it's a 3-0 lower bracket theme and a, and a 3-2 upper bracket theme, Nerdy? What do you think? How, how do you think this beef salad today match is going to go? Yeah, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I will take that, that bet. I'm going to say 3-0 uh, to Oxidia is going to be my prediction. Wow, wow, wow. That's wow. going to be my prediction. I think we'll simmer on that for a couple minutes, take a very quick intermission, and then we will throw it over to our beef salad Oxidia match in just a couple minutes. Don't go anywhere, guys. Last match of the day. Going to be the best one.
Once you've started up your MCSR ranked Minecraft instance, you're just gonna wanna click on the green ranked logo here in the middle right, and you'll be good to go. If you don't know what ranked is, it is a 1v1 race against another player on the same seed with the same RNG to determine who can beat the dragon first and win the match. There are six different ranks you can achieve while playing ranked, ranging from coal all the way up to netherite, which is a true display of the best speedrunners that ranked has to offer. While you're playing ranked, there are different types of seeds that you can roll and experience, ranging from village to shipwreck to the most commonly known buried treasure, as well as rarer seed types like ruin portal and desert temple. So if you're a new player, don't worry about learning mapless buried treasure seeds right off the bat. You won't get those seeds in your ranked games until you're at least emerald rank or above. If you're a new Minecraft speedrunner looking to play ranked, don't worry, your games will still be competitive. Every new ranked account goes through five placement games to hone its true elo to make sure you're playing people at your skill level. So it's not a one-way stomp, either your way or the opponent's way. And if you've played a few games of ranked already and wanna see where you stack up compared to everybody else, check out the leaderboard. There's a leaderboard based on overall elo. As you can see, two players have already reached netherite this season and it goes down to the top 150. So you can definitely see yourself on here one day, even if you're just starting out now. In addition to ranked, you can play casual mode, which features the same exact seed selections and gameplay as ranked, but just without the elo gain or loss after a match. And the final option here we have on the right is custom rooms. You can either join or create your own custom room. If you click create, it'll pop up a room with you as the host and up to 32 people can join. If you have any other questions about the ranked mod, how it works, anything like that, join the ranked discord. Everyone in there is happy to help. Hey, I'm Lewis Fulham. And today I'm gonna to show you how to install the MCSR ranked launcher really, really quickly. First thing that you're going to want to do is hop over to multimc.org and download whatever operating system that you have. You'll end up with a zip file like this. You're just gonna to want to extract this. You'll end up with a folder with multimc.exe inside. Once you download MultiMC, you'll see something like this. You're gonna to wanna to click Add Instance, Import from Zip, and then head over to the MCSR Ranked website. You can use exclamation mark ranked in the chat as well. You're gonna to wanna to download whichever operating system you have. I'm gonna choose the normal pack for Windows, and you just wanna copy this link right here. Go back to your MultiMC and paste it into this Import from Zip location. Click OK and everything is installed ready for you to launch. Welcome back gamers, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to our fourth and final match of the top eight MCSR ranked season three playoffs we have for you guys today. Banger match, Nerdy, you predicted a 3-0 Oxy. Well, okay, well, I, I, should say, I, I should I should like, you know, uh, qualify that. That was like, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily know if that's, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily like have a super strong feeling for that. I just wanted to okay. go along with the, the pattern that we were acknowledging of the lower bracket having three O's in the upper bracket, having three O's. Okay, so if it was going to be a three O, you think it would be Oxy or B-Saw, but you don't think it will be a three O. I don't, I, I probably, okay. Honestly, I, isn't it just more unlikely than not? I thought it was, I thought yeah. we did this math yes. last time. 
So then, I mean, probably I would not take that bet. But for fun, I'll, I'll make the prediction. 3-0 sure. to Oxy. Well, I mean, I think we should see what Oxy has to say about it. We have an exclusive player interview, last one of the day, with Oxy at themselves. So give it up. We'll see what they have to say about their playoff experience and the match upcoming. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, hi, I'm Oxidiot or Oxy. I'm 19 and I've been speedrunning Minecraft for around four years now. I got into MCSR around late 2019. I was watching M Sushi do like co op 1 7 runs and I was like, oh, this looks fun. So I, I played a bit of 1 7 and 1 14 then. I don't think I ever actually finished a run, but. I got back into it around early 2021. I think the biggest problems I've had in previous seasons have been mostly mental, like especially in the 0-2 against Automat and in season two, I just, I took a death in seed one that I couldn't really recover from mentally. I've definitely gotten better about mental stuff over the last season though. And I think it showed in my match against Ludlo. I took a very similarly like stupid and preventable death I still managed to play the rest of the match pretty well. I feel pretty good about my upcoming match. I think that I've been practicing and playing enough that I can I can trust that I'll win if I play well. Unfortunately, right after that match, I have to play either Loki or Hax, which are the two easily the two scariest players in the bracket for me. Loki is definitely the scariest player left in the bracket. Obviously, with him being the season two champion and i think he was the only player that i was like negative against last season that i like lost to more than i beat that's like still in the bracket at least but i don't know i was doing well against him at the tail end of last season so all i can really do is bring my best nails well good news for oxy that uh won't be a problem if she wins as Loki is uh, not in the bracket anymore. So it would be a, a hacks, uh, hacks versus Oxy match, potentially. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited to get into this. I, I wonder if we have the seed pick bands ready um, to show us. Oh, we got the player spotlight cards. We haven't done this in so long. It's so many best of fives. Oh, I forgot. We can throw it over to the player spotlight cards and see. Wow, five to one record in season three. That's a little... Uh, that's pretty telling. I mean, compared to the other two that we've seen, or the others that we've seen, right? It was um, like 15, 16, and like 5-4. The last two, 5-1, to one, though, is crazy, right? Like, Yep. That's uh, almost two best of threes. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about Oxy before. I mean, 70% win rate is ridiculous. Uh, she's very good at zero. She's very good at small, kind of like little things that add up mechanical type, type of stuff. Um, decision making, I think, uh, uh you know, it, it seems like as from the, from the little player interview, it seems like can be sometimes impacted by the mental, right? The mental attorneys is just hard and it seems like she's improved her mental, but you know, it, it is a hard thing to do, um, to, to stay focused, to, to be able to recover from those mistakes. So we'll have to see if, um, if she's made any improvement, hopefully so. And, uh, but yeah, mechanically very good player. And obviously, you know, the stats totally back her as a def definite tournament favorite. Yeah. Numbers speaking of themselves. I mean, 70% win rate's the highest that we've seen on a player card. Highest left in the bracket. Not by much, but definitely high. I mean, it starts with a seven. It's pretty impressive. I mean, you could throw it over to beef solids card, see the win rate and the average time. And I mean, almost an even win rate and then a minute slower ranked average time. But I mean, B saw the only qualifiers players that still be here in the top eight. I mean, beat Ankle Boy, uh, who Ankle Boy got third last season, right? right. Yeah. So, like, Ankle Boy, very, very good player, and, and 2 0 versus Ankle Boy as well. So, I mean, B saw, I think, has potentially hit a stride in the later half of the season. I mean, over a, a thousand games, the average can be very weighted down by slower completions in the first right. half of the season. Like, maybe, maybe the last hundred seasons that he's played, the average is 11 minutes. Or, or 12 minutes. And the last 100 games, maybe the win percentage is 60 or 65 instead of 51. So who knows? But I'm very excited in this game. I think we look at, I think we have the seed pick bands to show you guys. Wow, nerdy. No ocean seeds until at least seed four, but maybe not even in the entire best of five. BT and Shipwreck both banned. Nice. 
I mean, hey, I'm down for it. I'm these these are some you know unique uh, seeds. We'll definitely get a uh, desert temple, which is always fun. And uh, for me, I think my current favorite will will always get ruined portals, or we're guaranteed to get a ruined portal. So I am I'm 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 excited. I'm I think this is gonna be I think it's gonna be great. Yeah, I mean, village seed. You're you're basically always gonna have good food. There's always ways to get good food. Uh, it's just about can you find that lava pool and then can you route the overworld, right? Are you getting your flint? Are you getting your water? Very Lots of decisions to make, and I think it's a very interesting first seed to start these runners off. A little bit low-octane overworld, not the same as, you know, BT or Rune Portal, things like that, where you can kind of get right in the nether, get right into it, you know? Take some time to sort of simmer into the seed, maybe let the nerves sort of build up. I don't know, but we're getting right into the seed. There's our blacksmith. Both these runners. Let's see it. Nope, no obsidian. So, gonna be looking for a lava pool somewhere. Oxy letting the lava spill out here. Very interesting. Yep. And, uh, I mean, solid start here. We'll, we'll need to kill Golem to get Bucket. Yep. But, overall, you know, not a bad seed at all. Maybe a little Rachel slower than we like, but it's all right. Yeah, I was just sort of wondering where we're getting the food. Only one bread, not insane. Is there going to be a hay bale? Is there going to be a right food chest in another house? Are we going to grab carrots out of the farmland right here next to the golem? Maybe potentially the play for one or both of the runners. But I do see a food chest house as well and some hay bales. So we will see. Looking like carrots from Oxy. Not sure what Beast Out is going to do, but it's all about finding this lava pool, looking around while you're killing the golem, finding your river, getting the best gravel proximity possible. Let's see, yeah, carrot play for Oxy. Beef Out, carrot play as well. I love it. Beds, too. A little underutilized consideration in a village could be the difference maker between zero and no zero. And no, we've seen that matter a lot in seeds today a lot of seeds have been won by a better zero or a zero where there was none from the other player things There's like more that. opportunity for things like ground zero as well you know just having more explosives True. could definitely True. help um though I mean, one small thing that could be argued against it is it does definitely clutter up your inventory pre-bastion which i mean is not necessarily the end of the world right because you're going to use those but you don't need the beds until like at least the blaze spawner so there, there yep. could be an argument there, but I, I do think maybe getting some more beds could be smart here as well at the same time. Very interesting room portal on Lava Pool here. Definitely can just grab this gold block and then do a portal on this Lava Pool. Oxy hasn't crafted a bucket yet, though. So she's going to have to do that. Luckily, there's water right here, but it's going to give Beast out a little bit of an edge, and he's going to be in the nether faster. By just a few seconds. Really not that big of a deal. And but it is some time save. They're both in. Very far bastion, it looks like, from the spike. There it is. Finally. Kind of diagonal as well. Looking like we're in for the long haul here. And it's, do we see the fort? How do we get here with the terrain and the blocks that we have? Looks like Beef Salad didn't grab the gold block from the room portal, which is interesting. Definitely something that should have happened, especially because of golden carrot craft potential. I'd like to see him grab this gold block here, and he does. Okay, so Oxy able to skip this one because she already got a gold block in the overworld. Got to put her a little bit ahead in this terrain now, but these runners doing the exact same thing, going the exact same way almost. And... Very, very nice to see. I think we're going to get some chat farms here from uh, Beef Salad screen. <laughs> yep, the runners, when you unfull screen, put the, put the little emojis, put whatever they want in the sidebar. You know, Feinberg, I know that you, you don't like that strategy, but for, for that reason, you have to, you have to, you have to concede that that, that it's is a like little bit, it, It's kind of cool, yeah. It gives a little bit of that. runner, runner var variety. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like that, like for the memes, it, it definitely has a good... It also looks very goofy, which I think is should be considered as well, you know. What like when you just when you do a super wide stretch stuff, it just looks goofy. Yeah, it, it just it just looks goofy. I think yeah, the goofiness, the goofy factor, is something that I think should be considered, you know. Yeah. Look, there's very different ways of entering this bastion. Oxy building up from the side, 
Beef salad entering from the back and using the stairs, but going to be very, very similar end results for both runners. But Beef salad pressured here. Ooh, has to build with the wood. Thank God he's got blocks on the bar. But this is going to slow down this route. Oxy's going to able to be able to trade with these pigs faster here. Yeah, just everything's a little bit faster there for Oxidia. A little bit cleaner. Little yeah. bit faster. Ooh, beef oh, beef salad low. Half a heart. Half a heart. Oh, we got pigs potentially up. This dude needs to eat now. Ooh. Very oh, scary. Yeah, so Could be pigs wandering up from that staircase. Crossbow. Oh, do you see that arrow? Oh, and Oxy, wow. though, taking a lot of damage as well on four and a half with the piglin. Okay, I guess. Okay. She's no. okay, but it was a little bit. Beef salad pixels away from dying. Just incredible. That he's alive. And Oxy has to deal with this pig up here. Just manually trading. Are we going to see another manual trade? Pigs are going to be odd. Yeah, just the weird uh, treasure generation causes these pigs to be able to get up on the trades. Almost kills beef salad. Oxy low as well. I mean, both these runners weirdly playing around with this gold. They want to not eat any of the raw carrots. And Oxy hasn't crafted any of her golden carrots yet. So she's right. still playing very, very, very defensive in this bastion. Sure. Surely off this five gold, you craft some carrots. Three what hearts, no heal is very, very scary. I mean, you have so much stuff. What is the Yeah, but up? I mean, if you if you craft too much, then you might not get 20 obsidian. I thought... I that does get 20. scary. 41 yeah, obsidian. B-Salad B -Salad does have 32. Oh, okay, well, I wasn't sure. Half a heart. Wow. There's the golden carrots, though. Getting some really fast healing right into this fort, leaving Man. the crafting table. But Beef Salad's going to be able to leave right away as well. No? Getting more backups. I wonder what we're missing. Is it explosives? Are we just grabbing those? I don't know. But Oxy taking a pretty commanding lead now. Oh, pearls. 15 pearls only for, um, for Beef Salad. I think it's more right there. Up to 19. It's going to leave towards the fort. Oxy just playing a spawner ahead, but I'm not sure about zero potential. I saw a stack of strings, so that, that means good things, especially when we have village beds as well. Don't need to craft and waste a bed for plays, but we already have one. There just we are. need to deal with these blaze bedded blazes as Beef Salad works on some strays here. Baby Hoglin stray as well. A little silly. What can you do? Oxy clearing out rest of the spawner here I'm trying to fill up some of the uh some of the the surface area but yeah oh, it's just a little bit scuffed with this it's think very I, open, I think only needs one more rod that might have been the last rod that they needed i think got two or three drops there in a row no i thought the i thought the potatoes were blaze powder actually my fault not sure why those are still in the inventory, but that did fool me. <laughs> Keeping three potatoes in the inventory. I don't know. I got like a barely look at it. Maybe it was like a little pixelated. I don't know. But b -Sal blinding on five rods has made up actually a lot of time, it looks like, from, yeah. um, from strays. But not a good boat. I has to throw two. Just unlucky offset. Actually, sure. my only one eye here. No, Oxy needs two eyes well. So pretty even for both runners. Definitely a weird situation if one runner needs two and one runner needs one. Right. But both the runners blinding just outside this jungle, getting the same distance on their stronghold. Same two eyes throwing a boat eye. And no pearl tech here. If you need to pick up two eyes, it's just too slow. Your pearl will land before you can pick up both. But here they go, back in the nether at almost the exact same time. Looks like Oxy has 12. Beef Salad needs to get a rod here. Can he get a rod? No. Needs to wait for another Blaze Spawner cycle as Oxy is heading to cords already. That's the difference in the seed here. Five or six rods. And Oxy potentially running away with the seed. 
Yeah, I mean. It's the last rod, but I mean, beef style needs to go ham on this terrain there. that management. I mean, just look at the mechanics crafting that portal. Just so fast, you know? Yeah. We're not crafting the portal. Building the portal. <laughs> Spike for Oxy in the back as well. Yeah, like you said, looks like Oxy might just be Turns running away left. with the seed. Should be close to the portal room here. Is it left? No. Beef salad heading towards the same stronghold. Couldn't have better. It's possible. Let's see here. Thought the previous spike was pretty. Ooh, dungeon in the stronghold. Okay. Weird gen. I mean, not the chests or anything, but just weird gen. Is it right here in Backmore? Wow, it might be. No crazy spike. It's there, though. Is this where the portal room is? This is just so weird. It's like you, you know where it is from the spike. You know the direction, but you just can't get there yeah. at all. Like, Beef Salad doing the same exact weird nav stuff. I mean, is it maybe committal on that five-way that both of these runners turned around earlier? Like, the spike is looking great yeah. in that direction from both Oxy and Beef Salad. It's just how do you actually get to where the portal room is Yep. And neither of these runners have figured it out. That seems like... It seems like they're, they're both doing similar things. Though, of course, it is possible that Beef Salad could just... Beef Salad might have heard it here. Have. Might have heard it. Wormholing for some reason. And there we go. Looks like this might be it. There it is. It is. is. Wow. Four eye. Has the pre-craft. Oh my god. Is Beef Salad going to take this, this W? Yeah, even though... this might be C1. He's got crazy food. He's got the pearls. It's a Can weird overhang. Zero. It is front. Easy tower. Need a good pearl. Wow, good pearl. 94 going to 99. Has half a rotation. There it is. Nice damage. Good enough KB as well. Ooh. Just like the dragon high. He has so many beds. Go. And that's going to be good enough, I think. And Nerdy, you're 3 0 Oxidiate. I thwarted on C1. I already failed. He so, saw taking you know, a commanding first seed win. And it's, just, it's just weird. Navi gets that wormhole. It's just, how do you get there? Yeah. And B Sad got there. It is what it is. That's seed one. There's still a lot more Minecraft left to play. Wonder what this nav looks like if we can see. Yeah, directly under starter, but just a very, very, very weird loop mm, back yeah. and forth. And he just got that audio cue when he needed it. I was able to save time on that nav and win the seed out. Yeah, good stuff from Beef Salad. Um, I mean, I feel like Oxidia had still played that seed very, very well. Like, I don't think that really takes away much. Um, definitely a bit... Like I well I don't know the question for me would be did Oxidiate hear the cue and miss it? If yes, then she definitely made somewhat of a mistake. But if not, then maybe there's a bit of luck there. But overall, I mean, I feel like both players played this um, seed very well, and it came down to the stronghold at the end of the day. Yeah, but still more seeds to play. We've seen bad strongholds today so far. That might be the last one. We might have some more bad strongholds. Not sure what the seeds have in store for us, but let's see what. Oxy picks for C2, Room Portal over Desert Temple. I mean, again, going to have to play all three of these seeds at least anyways. But interesting pick. Going to be a very fast seed. Maybe just wants to get back on the element, you know? Had a little bit of a cool yep. down. You know, you're running around the stronghold for two, three, four minutes, and then you lose. Might as well just want to get right back into it. Fast seed. Who knows? But I like the pick. It's all a mental game. Both these runners insanely well. It's just who's playing better day of. Yeah, and totally Oxy's got to grab that momentum back, yeah. Totally makes sense. And I, I will say, like, this is interesting because on the one hand, I feel like uh, Oxidia is the, you know, mechanical player, right? Uh, and so I would, I would lead me to conclude that I feel like she'd have the advantage on this rune portal seed. However, in the previous match... Um, or sorry, in the previous interview we heard, 
you know, um, her, in, her inability in the last season to, to take the loss and, 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 you know, get over it and move on to the next seed. Hopefully that has changed. I mean, objectively, there's no connection between the two matches. So, yeah, hopefully... oh, here we go. Right into it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm wow. okay. Apologies. Oh, good. Your yapping is cut off. It's okay, nerdy. Um, We're into but yeah, it, but I... we have no iron in this seed. Very, very interesting. No iron pickaxe. Going to have to get that in the bastion. But we have a gold sword for distraction, and we also have no food. Very, very, very interesting room portal seed. And... Yeah, I mean, let's see. Here we've got Is this some... fire aspect? This is not fire aspect. You can smelt the food in the nether. There's Blackstone and Bastions. Can't make a furnace. It is possible. But two gaps is not bad. Very, very unique room portal seed, man. No iron at all. There is always guaranteed iron nuggets in the normal Bastion chests. But it's going to be weird. These runners are going to have to think outside the box how they're going to route the Bastion without starting with an iron pickaxe. Where you're going to go, what you're going to grab, how you're going to box yourself in with the blocks and the limited food that you have. Very, very unique, interesting seed. And already, runner's taking different terrain, and Oxy taking four hearts to fall damage on a low food seed could matter a lot in the long run. And there's the bastard for beef salad. Looks like Oxy sees it as well. Oh my god, one heart for Oxy. You're going to have to gap. Wow. Takes just random fall damage, missed parkour. That's not good. Let's see where the iron's gonna come from on Beef Salad's screen. This is a triple chest stables, single, triple, single, double, single, single. Potentially very, very ugly grabbing this iron. There are just so many chests it could be in. Not in any of these at the top. Gonna be on a scavenger hunt here on this seed for the iron ingots that we need. Not here either, but we're slowly collecting nuggets nearly. 17. Need 27. Oxyon 17 nuggets as well. There's two more possible chests it could be in. Well, potentially three, I guess. And Oxy finds it. The lower bottom chest. There are the iron ingots. B Sal finds it as well. But I think this food difference might come and matter a lot, nerdy. Yeah, Oxy's sure. just very low. Going to need to pop this next gap soon. But, I mean, if she finds time to smelt the two mutton, that could be really good. No. For sure. I mean, there's a lot of overlapping that can be done, especially crafting, you know, the furnaces with the blackstone. Um, so that, that's for sure a possibility. We get a stables route here. Don't think we're getting pig fall from either of these runners. Actually, Oxy is doing pig fall. My bad. It's so hard to tell when you're in that triple. Yeah. The, uh, the wall of the gap, I should say. But beef salad doing regular. So different stables routes from a lot of runners today. Very interesting. But, I mean, other than that, you get the gold, you trade. Got to wait it out. And then the fort was on the way to the bastion. So we'll see how that goes. But I think beef salad, I mean, he's got the edge on food. A little slower on the pace, but I like the edge on the food in terms of, like, health and food quality, I should say. Because Oxy's going to have mm -hmm. to find time to smelt this. Um, mutton has four blackstone already so if they're thinking about it they can mine some blackstone literally surrounded by it here it's just going to be do they want to do it do they want to think about it and it just it will be the right play it's just do does it come up in your head or are you going to eat this mutton raw okay yeah, I mean, for Blackstone, I mean, she could easily mine for four more while these guys are trading. I, I don't yeah. know if uh, that's just not coming, like, being thought of, or if she's just thinking it's not important. I don't know. Yeah, there you go, eating the mutton. So I eating guess. Eating it raw? Yeah, wow. So just wasn't really thinking about it. Um, I think it's just so important, though, when you have so little food, you're going to have to eat this yeah. gap, and you're just going to have to hunger reset at some point in this seat. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. beef salad can use this gap and maybe make that last all the way into the portal room with some food to spare. Yeah. But we'll see. Maybe it won't matter. He saw it in the fort first, though. Maybe just got more pigs on the stables route because he did get the iron second. 
Yeah. It was very interesting. This is an and interesting pearl, pearl hang as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a lack of 20 obsidian is my best guess. Yeah, not be. really sure why we were pearling here. Where is Oxy going? Oh my god, two hearts skeleton. Oh no. Hoglins as well. Has to eat the gap now. Well, a pearl's hung, so we're Ooh. already going to be down two and a half. Just a very, very bad food situation. Doesn't even have a lava bucket as well. Oh god, yeah, this is just not going to good kill at all. a hoglin. I don't so, yeah. no flint and steel either, but that can be crafted. Yeah, or fire charges as well. Has fire charges. Okay, okay. Beef okay. salad just not finding a spawner though. Not yeah, sure he's getting like... unlucky or I really don't know, but no spawner from beef salad and he's got a pearl hung. So has to make sure he's yeah. not going to unhang this pearl. Well, he chose to find the spawner. Giving Oxy a little bit of room to catch up. And uh, has to take the gap now. Which... Yeah, beef salad's still looking for a spawner. Has his RD up very scared about this pearl hang. But it looks fine right now, and Oxy needs to find it. Two hearts, no food, nerdy. Any skeleton, any blaze, any wither skelly. Has six bars of armor, so it's not the end of the world. Maybe that's like full gold with like an iron piece yeah. or two. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, iron boots and gold rest. But, I mean, B-Salad's health, I mean, not the best either, but it's eight hearts instead of two. I would rather be on eight hearts. I'm not sure about you. Uh, yeah, I think that would probably be better, right? Yeah. And look at this. Oxy having to deal with a Wither Skelly and two Skellies, and it's just a death sentence. If you go over there, it has to find the other spawners. I mean, no one's out here based on where Beast Saddle was running, but it's just such a wacky fort. Both these runners looking for these spawners for so long. And Beef Salad on three rods. In a position to make this seed potentially 2-0 in favor of himself. Yeah, which would be, I mean, definitely a bit of a surprise. I mean, we have to remember, like, look at the ELO difference here. Almost, you know, 400 or so. Um, these There's two players, I mean, Has to be so careful. Wow. So good that that Hoglin was um, being a bit stupid. And you have to, I, I think you just chug both the pork chop now. No, no reason to die. But Beef Salad just cranking the spawner so much faster, so ahead on the spawn rates and the rods wow. and all that. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, he's got away for seven rods. Doesn't have 20 obby. I'm not sure about Oxy's obby count. That could be some variance in the seed potentially. Not sure how much obby Oxy has. 22. Yeah, so Beef Salad's going to be playing home portal here. And I guess it is a room portal, so that's a little bit of um, solace in the fact that it's going to be a very, like a surface room, surface home portal. Can hunger reset yep. off of that easily? Beef has 20 obsidian. I'm just completely wrong. I thought he had a pearl hung to home portal. Maybe I, he just... Wait, what? I swear he hung a portal to home portal. Pearl hung for terrain, potentially? That's true. Yeah, maybe he did. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I guess so. I do make this play sometimes. That's fair. I guess it's for terrain. Maybe he thought he was just going fully buried into the fort. I see the vision. Don't think it ended up mattering as there was good terrain where the spawners were, but I see the vision. And unfortunately, this eye sees its way directly into a ca cave. I always say cave, but it's just like a mountain. So, Beast Salad has to throw two eyes here, potentially three if this boat eye is inaccurate. Thanks for the lulls, chat. There's the boat eye. Nice accuracy there. Hopefully, it doesn't get breaks, though. No, it can just leave. Had seven rods. So. Can't just completely leave. But it's going to take a hunger reset here. Oxy killed another Hoglin. Maybe another two Hoglins. Yeah, another Four. two Hoglins. Yeah, okay. Very, very interesting. But Beef Salad is just on his way to second portal cords. Doesn't have the best food, so maybe he needs a hunger reset one more time before we zero. But, I mean, a full split ahead of Oxy. And we are running out of seed, Nerdy. This could be enough time save to win. For sure. Enough that being does... ahead. Oh, man, like, hoping Oxy can recover, even if not from this match, then, you know, moving on mentally from to the next one, right? Um, but that being said, I mean, this match is certainly not over as 
you know, we've seen much, you know, uh, more distant pace differences uh, result in the in the one behind catching up and winning. So it's 100%. it's not over, but this is definitely starting to, uh, you know, it feels to me like beef salad is starting to kind of run away with this one. Yeah, I mean, he's got to find his way to cords and terrain, though, and on two and a half, can't pearl at all. True. Could just fall and die here. Very scary. But Oxy through four eyes, apparently, might have to go back to the fort to get another rod. Not mm -hmm. sure. I think their first portal linked to their home portal in the stronghold. Uh. Or home portal. Um, so they lost their position in the fort. But it looks like they're just heading to Gord's. Not really forcing blazes here. Beef Salad in the oh. stronghold, though. No, they do have to get more rods. Oxy does. Wow. So unlucky. Oh, and it's an ocean exposed portal room, potentially. Right yeah, there. Yeah, there's a Beef Salad. Wow. Needs, the, um, needs the hunger reset for the zero. But it's going to crank it out of here. It could be very fast. How many pearls or how many beds do we have? I should say. Four, Four beds, three anchors. Three Definitely anchors, very, yeah. very hittable zero. Have a lot of nice blocks here as well. Just have no food, so pearl clip could be weird. That's nice though. And it's front. That's very nice. Oh, wow. What an easy tower. 95. 99. Wow. Beef salad going ham on this zero. Gets the anchors down barely. Scary damage, though. Did not need to go to 99. Let's see here. Has three anchors. Needs to place one in the middle. Needs Ooh, to do these damage. two. Good damage, though. Good one damage. More. Yes, very good damage. Barely clutches. Not getting hit by the dragon on the way down. Very good stuff. Good, good stuff. I am shocked that he went to 99 there. Just no need to, and made it way closer than it should have with the seven explosives, but clutched it. And yeah, maybe Beef Salad did pearling earlier in the seed because of uh, home portal shenanigans. But I mean, look at look at this though, Oxy making it back very close in the end where the seed's over. Totally, yeah. I mean, respect I mean, to her. Very well played, and hopefully Oxy does like like I said earlier. I mean, the the uh, Oxy's been playing very well. I, I, can Oxy just you know, it, it's okay. You lost two. That you can win three in a row. Uh, you've won three, you know, I think the record was five to one before this. So definitely three consecutive wins is not unheard of at all for Oxy. And uh, um, the question is, you know, just taking a deep breath, you know, using the uh, Fulham analysis segment to, uh, you know, refocus. And, you know, if she can do that, she can totally win this. But it is looking like Beef Salad is starting to run away with this, with this, uh, with this match. Yeah, uh, and it looks like we are ready to throw it over to our full analysis, like you said, to see if this is going to be a 3-0 nerdy, but not in the way you expected. Let's throw it over to Fulham. Here we go. Now, a lot of people have not been assuming that this match that is definitely not against Seven Rail and Danny Boy, I apologize for not having sorted out the heads in time, was a very quick turnaround here. Let me quickly fix that up. It is Oxidiate versus Beef Salad. Um, this match may have gone in Oxidiate's favor. However, at the moment, it is not currently swaying in that direction. Beef Salad, two seeds to the good right now, 2 0 up, and Arguably against the run of form during the season, we can talk about the ELOs being a lot higher for Oxidiate and Oxidiate having um, the better win rate during the season against one another as well. However, in this match, which is the only one that matters, Beef Salad is 2-0 up right now. And even though he pretty much tried to take a death early on in this seed. If we have a little look right here, he did take a hell of a lot of damage, was down to half a heart at this point. And um, after blocking off all of the piglins, was able just about to survive. Didn't want to eat any carrots here. Didn't, really didn't want to actually gain any hunger. And, and the piglin 
misses a point blank shot while he's standing in the in the hole, missing it. I don't know how he survived this, but he did. Very, very fortunate. Um, and then Oxidian also dropped down to half a heart after throwing this pearl right here. Uh, she knew that the pigs were on trading. She was ready to get out, throws the pearl, but it's a very confident pearl to throw because on the uh, slight off chance that you would potentially get something like, I don't know, landing on a block or... Uh, landing on a vine maybe and falling down you would die if you took any fall damage at all so a very confident pearl there by oxidia and i thought that was really a sign of things to come just because of how confident oxidia was playing however even though oxidia beat beef salad to the stronghold beef salad heard the portal room was able to dig into the portal room and hit the zero cycle Two very confident zero cycles from Beef Salad clearly has been practicing. It's not an easy strategy by any means and was able to see this off. Weird overhang as the commentators did pick up, but it was a front dragon. And there have been two absolutely fantastic pearls. If we have a look here, almost hitting the top of the tower, a really, really strong pearl and able to cleanly play this zero cycle, able to get the beds off, uh, time them very well. And arguably, this could be one of the biggest upsets. We thought that Beef Salad last time in the round of 16 had a pretty big upset, but this one could be just as big. And that was seed one. Seed two, um, Oxidiate was taking quite a little bit of fall damage here. And I don't know if this was like a parkour reason or just a misclick or a lack of a lack of confidence all of a sudden, maybe just feeling a little bit out of out of her depth, potentially. Um, but it was weird because I remember during the round of 16, I clipped a slightly similar clip where it felt like a pretty simple jump that was missed. Uh, we can see that there going down to one heart. Um, and this is in the round of 16 where they missed this jump twice just in the overworld. And I'm worrying about Oxidiate's nerves, potentially, if this is potentially coming into play now. Maybe that first seed, it felt like she was playing quite confidently, and she was ahead for a long time. But then losing it right at the end, I think, has potentially knocked her mental. And I think that's something that needs to be unlocked for this next match, if Oxidiate wants to have a chance. Because right now, Oxidiate isn't playing as confidently as she usually does. You know, very low food, very low, uh, you know, struggling to deal with a lot of these tough situations. Um, and we can see here, gratefully, she did find some food to be able to pick up. Does see this hoglin here. Uh, luckily, this hoglin is just within the, um, the distance of this, as we can see, just here of this blue fungus. Now, of course, the blue fungus is what's going to make the hoglins scared and they don't attack you. So by standing just close enough, it does mean that this hoglin is pretty much stunlocked. So as soon as Oxidia deals some damage to it, doesn't want to come any closer than this. So was able to just crit it out three times, get some really good food, and finally get off of two HP, which was pretty scary. Now, as people were discussing in chat, Beef Salad did Pearl Hang for good terrain. However, arguably spawned in the worst terrain possible in the middle of a crevasse. Just a wall on each side. Tries to boat eye, but it does go into a wall. Luckily, he did have 14 eyes, so it really didn't matter. He made no, you know, there was, there was no stress. Decided to build up. Knew what he was doing. However... Something that was was also brought up by the commentators, the portals linked for Exidiot. And if we want to look here, a really obvious thing that happened was that as soon as she placed the boat, it went directly through the portal. Now, this obviously means this portal is linked to your home portal because your home portal is in your spawn chunks. Now that that's that's a very, very rare play that we will very unlike we're very unlikely to see in in ranked or in RSG. But in this specific situation, the boat disappears, meaning that it loaded back into the overworld. So maybe Oxidia would have known, oh, wait, hold on. After this, after seeing the boat go through straight away, you should take a step out of the portal, make sure you've got those six rods, and then go in. Because she knows that once she's done the measurements, she's going to go back into the portal 
And she's not going to spawn right back at this portal by the blaze spawner. She's instead going to spawn at her home portal on spawn, which is not where you want to be. You have to get another, if you want to get another rod. So, of course, this allowed Beef to take a further advantage in this seed and does hit a beautiful zero cycle, cranking all the way up to 99. Arguably unnecessarily, but does hit it very clean. Little bit of a late first bed, but does allow the dragon to get a lot of knockback. Little bit worried after that second bed. Third bed deals immensely good damage. Fourth bed, fantastic damage. This anchor takes out... Uh, a ton of uh, of health, and the final two anchors were very clean as well. Uh, really, really clutched that back from a tough position uh, during that zero cycle. Was a little bit nerve wracking. However, it is still all to play for. It is two zero to our arguable underdog beef salad. Will he convert and make it three zero, or will we see a comeback from Oxidian? I don't know, but if this is the last time that you see me today, make sure you come back for tomorrow as the semifinals and the finals are going to be tomorrow at the same time in all of the same places, no matter which coast stream you're looking at. This is probably going to be the last ranked se uh, analysis segment, but you never know. If it goes to two all, I might come back and give you one extra special treat. All right, guys, um, I'm going to send you back over to your commentators. Thank you all so much for watching the analysis segment, and I will see you later or tomorrow. Wow. Fireworks muted! Guys, Dude, this was the first this was the first time I messed up all day, man. It's because Fulham like only mutes sometimes in Discord, so I don't wanna like make I don't wanna distract him. And then this is the first time I messed it up. Uh, okay, well, whatever. It's funny, and that's what matters. Okay. Well, anyways, I was gonna say thank you to Fulham for the analysis again. As always, we potentially will see you once more again at the end of the seed four if we get there. But uh, beef salad can easily make us not get there. He just has to win one of the next two, or I mean, one of the next three seeds, and he'll be on to the semifinals tomorrow. We are playing our Desert Temple Nerdy, our third and final non banned seed. I mean, I think Oxy just has to shake off a little bit of the mistakes and, you know, lock in a little bit harder because the, the pace is there. She, she's playing faster in the micro, I think, but it's just the macro. Or maybe the other way around, I don't know. But, like, there's small mistakes. I think she's playing faster overall, but it's just the small things. Like, faster than Stronghold Seed 1, can't nav, and then just misplays in Seed 2. Gets beef solid the victory in the Rune Portal Seed. Yeah, I mean, overall, just... Yeah, we a few misplays, a few things. I mean, we know that Oxidiate has the skill. The question is does she is she able to sort of get past the the mental the mental and it's a challenge i don't want to say like it's some easy thing that like you know like i oh, think yeah. anyone would would struggle to come back from a 2-0 right but it's possible and you know i could see well one thing i will say if she wins this game i really it's think that's good momentum yeah yes 100 yeah, percent um so I think it's like, is it unlikely um, that Beef Salad does not advance? Maybe. But I also think it's very, very possible. And, you know, in the same vein, like, uh, Beef Salad needs to focus up. You know, it's, he's, he's, not, he's not done yet. Job's not over, yeah. you know? Can easily lose three seeds in a row. You know, you think you're in the clear. You think, oh, I'm going to win no matter what. Like, I can troll a little bit and it's fine. But you troll too much and it's over. Still yeah. very, very winnable. Um, I want to relax for either player, yeah. And if anyone can make this comeback surmountable, I would be Oxy. I think looking at the, the stats, still man, seventy percent win rate, five right. and one versus opponent in season three, better average right. time, better best time. Like all the cards are in her favor. She just needs to lock in. Yeah, iron out the mistakes, play her best, and I think it'll be good enough. I probably said I was farming chat in her interaction. Okay, man. Okay, man. Well, I say lock in, and there's all the. Uh, all the Walter emojis, bro. Dougal's from in the chat interaction. <laughs> your your wall ball play was the best I've seen by far, though. Best. Of, thank you, thank you, thank you. Far. I mean, I appreciate that. I enjoy I enjoy chat farming. You know. Interesting seed though, nerdy. This is very very interesting to look at. Um, I think. 
I, I want to say Oxy is smelting iron. Yeah, 11 iron ore. I, I couldn't tell if that was iron ore. I just, I, in my head, there's no way that she would have had 11, but she does. But Beef Salad has to play with a stone pick. Didn't blow up the iron ore in the bottom of the temple. So if this yep. iron in the bastion is not that accessible, you know, how the route goes, could be very, very, very bad situation for Beef Salad. A lot of mm -hmm. potential time loss here. Totally. Entering a bastion without a iron pickaxe. Yeah, that could be very problematic. Um, we will see. And maybe this could give Oxy that momentum we were just talking about, you know? Yeah. I mean, not sure where the lava pool is on the seed, where these players are going to enter, but looks like they're about to start. I mean, Beef Salad maybe 10 seconds faster? 15? There's the enter in the desert. But, I mean, just no iron pickaxe. He's got a... No, not even really more food. Oxy has eight pork chop. Just way better gear for Oxy across the board, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, you should have the TNT, right? From the temple. Yeah. So, that so it's a bridge. Like it's really bridge. not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. It's like one in four. This is just not a problem for beef salad. Yeah. And it's not a stables. Looking at the E counter. So it's a one in three, potentially. This is not a problem. And the e counter then... didn't make it look like treasure either. Looks like we see the fort to the left there as well. Okay. There it is. Spawner. Yeah, if this is a bridge, very, very, very not a problem. We got but more if chat it's easy housing. Yeah. Nice little thin scan for E Ray. Look at Oxy finding a random room portal, grabbing an extra gold block, and just way better train to the bastion. She saves so much time, and it's a housing. So if beef salad, if there's no, there's no iron blocks of, or uh, iron ingots yeah. up here, this is very, very bad potentially. But there is, the look, in the double. Okay. Iron chest, or iron ingots. On Suddenly this is saw. very close. Yeah. Only very small amounts of time loss for beef salad here. Ooh, but look at no. this route, like where are we going with these piglins? Breaking the chest is a little bit risky in my opinion. Trying to figure out this lower route through the housing, dropping the pigs down. Wow, I not feel like sure that was... if they're falling through again. I mean, it's a very, very nice heads up play with the oh, nabber, but he is I getting dead. No, no, that was very oh, smart. God. He dropped it. He dropped a gap, I think, to um, wow. distract the piglins. And I mean, he's gonna probably want to kill them and pick that up later. But just what a play to not die. I mean, losing a gap is very bad, but. Dying is much worse. So a very yeah. nice play from Beef Salad there. Keeping himself alive. But I will wonder if you will kill these piglins, gravel suffocate them at the end, because they will just keep the gap in sort of like their hidden inventory. And it will just be there. They, they won't eat it or do anything with it. It'll just be there. He will get it back if he wants to. We will see. Nice obsidian in that chest. 31 already for Oxy. And Beef Salad's inventory is so cluttered here. Struggling where he's going to get this gold. Just temple inventory. Broke a couple chests. Like you axe a chest and you pick up like he's got two crossbows, magma cream, gold nuggets, yep. arrows, one stick. Just so ugly. We'll see. Beef Salad doesn't have to pyre. He definitely saw the fort. It looks like Oxy didn't. She is pyreing. Yep. And there's the crazy, crazy obby chest for Beef Salad. Actually going to be very close, I think. This gap might really matter. Is he going to double suffocate these pigs? No. Not worth his time for the gap. Maybe not even thinking about the play. But Oxy heading to the fort. Is this the right direction, though? Repiring her again. She doesn't know. Far. Mm. 16 chunks still. Went the wrong way. Oh, no. Whereas we know that Beef Salad just saw the fort. Beef Salad just saw it. It's very, very close. Literally one pearl the other way. I'm not sure if she pirated the wrong way and, and decided to play wrong for that. But, yeah, I mean, both these runners on the exact same part of the yeah. basalt right now. Throwing almost the exact same pearl. Wow, look at that. Wow, yeah. So they're totally neck and neck. The question is, yeah, you know, how, how do they play this fort? I guess. I mean, I don't know. They're, they're just, they're, it's so close. 
literally the Simulac spot. Oxy's just five seconds ahead of Beef Salad, just running in the sort here. Who's going to find the spawner first? Like a quadruple layer fort here that they're realizing now that you may be prone to a very weird spot. Like they're both on similar HP. They're both on... It's crazy. He's still got the spawner behind him. He's got to see it. He does. Playing the same exact spawner. Oxy just gets here literally seconds earlier. Wow. Are we going to do donut TNT from Oxy? We are. What Blaze TNT is Beef Salad going to do? Donut as well. Okay. Very, very interesting. It's the right play. Double donut. Takes a little bit longer to set up, but it will clear slightly more blocks. I respect it. I like it a lot. Yeah. We've got I really think it's a time neutral thing. It's just silly to yeah. watch and experience. But, I mean, these spawn rates are, should be the same between runners. Oh, my God. Oxy misplacing an obby, but we have, like, 40, so it's okay. So, Obsidian Art going on on her screen. And doesn't have these blocks built out on the side. Going to have to spend a little bit more time getting this blaze here. Oh, and look at this. Goes so far out. Grab the rod. Yes. But how many rods does Beef Salad have? Four for Oxy. Looks like three for Beef Salad, maybe. Just so close. These runners in the same spot doing the same things. Yep. Yeah, four rods for B-Salad as well. Legitimately five or ten seconds behind on the spawner cycle, and that's it. It's just going to come down to terrain nav, the second portal. How fast can you measure your eyes? I think this is... I think I favor Oxy maybe slightly here. Just because... I mean, she's ahead by just a few seconds, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's very, very, very close. And also, I just feel like Oxy is just very good at end games and stuff like zeros and all that so i i, I definitely feel like oxy maybe has the it has the edge here but the question is like you know is there anything that's going to come in the way yeah that's the sixth rod oxy can go to cords really nice pearl there sneaking in so as far as up nice block clutch as well b gets it off of no needs one more blaze spawn he got desynced one blaze somehow. If it was bad, uh, bad uh, blaze bed, slow blaze bed at some point, I'm not sure why, but he is one blaze rod behind. He needs to wait for another spawner cycle. Here goes Oxy. There it is, yeah, but Oxy in the stronghold. Can't she get a spike? She can on the right. Oh, you can... There, wow. <laughs> that's, that's there crazy. it is. Least visible portal room. And has stuff for zero. Up to zero. Looks Pretty very high. nervous though. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, it's very high stakes. Yeah, I mean, you just you have to hit the zero. Has the prep stuff though. It's one and eight. Need to hit a speed bridge here. Let's see. One out to twenty-two here. Yep. Diagonal up as well. Is it going to break the bed? No. Good start. Got to keep the KB up. Oh, that was an early bed. Oh, no. That was not good. Okay. We have bow and arrow, but beef salad on our screen to the right. Let's see if he can Building hit it. Building this really high. He's it up too. He's, no. He's, no. He's, no. He's, 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 oh, my God. And I think, Nerdy, I think he has enough spare explosives to fully correctly one cycle. I think I agree. I'm pretty sure and that's I right. I think he does. I think he might win. I think Oxy has to full bow. What a clutch. Solid can play off a perch, and is that the snap? It's the snap. <laughs> and that's GG. He's got five beds. GG. He's got five beds, Nerdy. It's over. It's a 3 0 wow. in exactly opposite way you expected. Beef Sad on to oh the semifinals God. tomorrow. And it's over. I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words. What a crazy ending. Completely unexpected. I mean, it's the lower bracket, Nerdy. 3 0 on our lower half. Both games, just incredible stuff. I mean, but it does not show how close this 
best of five really was. In no, terms not of at all. Gameplay Every single in, in match each individual was so scene. close. But wow. like, what an ending, man. That was crazy. Wow. I'm just, I'm at a loss for words. That was just the craziest ending to today that we could have asked for. Great best of five, man. I right, could throw it over to the bracket and just see. Yeah, this is our semifinals for tomorrow. Chat, same exact time. Same exact place if you're watching any of the co-streams. Same exact time and place for those as well. This is our top four. We have Ral, the one seed. Priffin Hacking Noises and Beef Salad coming in from the qualifiers, still alive in the bracket. The only person to make it to the quarterfinals from the qualifiers, and he makes it through Oxidiot to the semifinals. We're finishing up the entire bracket tomorrow. Semifinals, third place match, and grand finals. Be some very, very exciting stuff, Nerdy. Absolutely. What an ending to today. What an ending. Yeah, I mean, just some, like the, the three two best of fives were great. And I mean, even the three O's, like even just the, the individual seeds in the three O's were just so close and intense. Like what an ending there, man. The yeah. one and eight zero, so skill intensive with the nerves. Oxy gets there, but just missed times one bed. Beef salad yeah. tries to push 96, can't get there, has to hit the boat clutch. And by some grace of just, he choked it earlier than she did. And so was able to fully one cycle when Oxy could not. And yep. I mean, just like, like what an ending seed. I mean, just insane stuff. Um, thank you to the editors of the interview videos today, Bendo and Alistair. I'm not sure who edited the last one. It might have been. Sonia, I think. Did Sonia, Sonia edit the last one? Okay, Sonia. so Bendo, yeah. Alistair, and Sonia edited some last week, edited some this week again. Big shout outs to our editors. Um, and, and a very, very big, huge shout out to, again, the anonymous chatter donor who has doubled the ranked prize pool for ah. this season from 2.5K to 5K. So tomorrow, our runners will be playing for a $3,000 first place prize, $1,500 second place prize, $500 third place prize. Rivals uh, or matches the season two prize pool. Very, very excited. And again, Nerdy, none of these players have ever been in a ranked playoffs finals match at all and i and i ox no wait it's beef salad ryle priffin and hacking noises i don't think any of these players have ever been even in the top four of a playoffs totally new people i love to see i think it. I yeah think awesome. i think this is completely new and so all of these players none of them have ever made money from a playoffs before one of them will be walking home with three thousand dollars tomorrow wow. one of them That's will be amazing. walking home with nothing Wow. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, just, just insane stuff. Um, and again, huge shout out to um, our Spanish and Polish co-streamers, Shadud and Automat, bringing the audience of MCSR ranked to new people, more languages, more casting. Very, very awesome. Very happy to be working with them today and tomorrow and hopefully in the future. Yeah. I don't have anything else. I mean, oh, yeah, thanks to the, uh, the refs. People working behind the scenes in the background for the private rooms and stuff. Big shout outs to our hosts and all that stuff, all that jazz. Big shout outs to Fulham for the analysis. And I mean, I'm excited to finish this up tomorrow, Nerdy. Ooh, I don't know about you. I'm excited too. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. And, I mean, if uh, these games were no. crazy, I mean, we like, and it, and it lines up with the bracket so well too. The, the top semifinal match is our, our 3 2 Warriors on the brink of elimination yeah, today. Yeah. Facing off again tomorrow. They've been battle, battle worn, bro. Battle, battle scarred. True. And True. the lower half of the bracket, some 3 0 steamrollers, bro. Yeah. Unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Yeah. And then the winner of each going to the finals. I mean, this, it's going to be great content tomorrow. I hope that we see everyone in chat here tomorrow. Same time, same place. Be same, here. if not better, Minecraft spirit and gameplay. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. I'm very pumped. So thank you guys again for watching. Thanks to everyone behind the scenes again. Appreciate you guys all. We will see you guys tomorrow. Be there or be sad that you're going to miss the gameplay of your life. We'll see you guys then. Bye.